Ladies and gents, welcome to a Hidden Cup 5 show match. So what we have here is we have two heroes. And we've got uh, Tamerlane and William Wallace. These are heroes that were used in the past in Hidden Cup. And they were used in Hidden Cup 2. And to give people a taste of Hidden Cup, we have players who lost in the qualifier that are playing here against each other. Now we've got 10 poten uh, 12 potential players. Uh, and for YouTube purposes, if we use this, we could have them on screen. I don't know who the players are, though, and obviously we're going to find out at the conclusion of the show match. So we've got William Wallace in the yellow. William Wallace actually chose the color yellow here. And then Tamerlane chose color 5, color teal. So they've definitely gone for some color mind games. I'm thinking of the players. I don't think any of the players are known for picking yellow or teal on this list that we have there. I have a, a, like a memory of maybe like Valas picking teal before. In the past, so maybe he's Tamerlane. Anyways, uh, Arabia game one. We're going to have a full best of seven here. There is also money on the line. It is $200 for the winner and then $100 for the loser. Viper confirmed. Yes. It, get the confirmed emote mixed in there, chat. <laughs> I, I love that emote. Yeah, things to think about. We've got Kamur against the Mayans. Um, an interesting matchup. I actually have a... a memory of seeing this matchup on Arabian like Titans League or something but it's not something you see that frequently and okay you know what I have a guess already okay my guess already is that William Wallace could be Dogao the only reason I say that is because like Dogao and actually fire the Brazilians still really like to pick Mezzo game one on Arabia not that other players don't like to pick Mezzo but Mayans and Aztecs aren't picked quite as frequently as they were in the past so but apparently it's not possible because Dogal is Tamerlane as well, according to my chat here. So good to know. T9, do the players know who they were facing? Ooh, good question, actually. For the show match, they might actually know. Robo might be listening. Robo, are you... Can you confirm that? That would be really good to know. Um, I, I actually don't know the answer to that. Obviously, in the main event, they, they do not know who they're up against. Robo says they are not told beforehand. Ooh, Robo, are we asking? Like, are we asking the players after the show match who they thought they played against? Can we do that? That would be really fun. So right now, looking for tendencies here. Looks like we will see an early barracks here from William Wallace. And you asked for guesses too. Sick. Okay, cool. Well, I wish I had a way. You know what I'm going to do? Just for a second, just to remind all of us. Do you guys want me to go back to the player list for just like five seconds? William Wallace here bringing in a boar. William Wallace going to go for the militia. I might like to take a look at it for just a second here. It's just Dark Age on Arabia. Uh, I think we can do that, right? Okay, so those are the potential players. Capwatch, Classic Pro, Daniel, Dark, Dogal, Fire, Andy, Kingston, Margugu, Vallis, Veleza, and Vivi. Hmm... Okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. All right, so I got that burned into my brain. You guys probably have that burned into yours. William Wallace coming forward here, scouting out, finds the enemy TC right away. Almost lost the eagle. Was able to veer to the side, not bad. Militia on the way, and some walling here from Wallace. William Wallace, get it? Ha! Sorry. Um, Stone's going to be on the back. That's really nice. The gold could be a problem, though. And we'll see if it. we end up seeing the third militia here. You can't afford it without some extra gold. So it's going to be two militia. I'm definitely getting some Brazilian vibes already. Like, I'm sensing Brazil right now with William Wallace. And it's super early. Like, a fire Dogal situation wouldn't be the biggest surprise to me. But that is like... <laughs> we've gone with, based on so little info. <laughs> So little info. The strategy is called the Frush, the French Rush. So maybe we have a Mar maybe a Margugu sighting. Hmm. Walls coming up. That's pretty typical for the Mayans. Not necessarily anything that tells us about a player. And smart to do with the cheaper walls. And Tamerlane is about to hit Feudal Age and wants to go for scouts and wants to build the stable here. And surprise, Tamerlane. And Tamerlane immediately hops into the houses. Okay. All right, so we see a stable. Interesting. So maybe this isn't a player that's super comfortable with quick walls. 
Look at the look how we didn't see quick walls around the berries. Actually, Loom wasn't in, so maybe the risk didn't want to be taken. I do have four villagers inside of this house. Still not working, so this this drush is doing enough here for William Wallace so far. And holy walls, man! Very extreme walls. Uh, militia are going to fight this back. And we are going to see scouts. And now we see villagers going forward. Huh. Interesting. Someone says Capoch confirmed with the walls. That's that's maybe not a bad guess. Capoch. Capoch. Vivi, maybe. Vivi, Vivi, I could see going forward, actually. This is fun, man. <laughs> this is fun, dude. I. <laughs> you guys got to remember, it's been... Over three years since I have covered even, like, anything Hidden Cup related in actual hidden format, right? It's been since Hidden Cup 4 main event. And the show match is bringing me some fun vibes here already. Alright, so tower's gonna go up. William Wallace is in the next stage, though. Super crazy walls. Like, really's played defensive. It's going to drop a counter tower here. Those scouts are unlikely to break through, but still... We'll see what Tamerlane can do, forcing some aggression down here on the berries. There's Hunt. And then there's also the berries there. Well, there's not really Hunt anymore, but there is that one deer, so. Yeah, nice patience here from William Wallace. Repairs the wall, hops into the tower. But I also like the aggression from Tamerlane. Now, there is stone on the back for William Wallace to be able to get more. But I doubt that's really going to be... Well, maybe. Maybe we could see Plumed Archers in this matchup. I, I don't know if Plumed Archers are too good in the matchup. But certainly, it's it's easy enough to recoup some of that stone. Yep, this is what should always happen in this situation. Nice shot from William Wallace. Just deletes the walls, rushes this down. So that tower will get shot down. And maybe a Spearman or two will be added. But right now, I'm noticing William Wallace actually has struggled with food income. Being pulled off of berries for that period of time really slowed him down. And also missed out on those pigs there. And this drush didn't really accomplish too much. The eagle went down, and the militia are coming to hunt for villagers. So, very, very passive start for Arabia, right? Like, I, I, I would be very surprised, just based on Arabia, if someone like Margugu was playing. Because Margugu seems... He doesn't typically wall as much, and he's normally a lot more aggressive. Now, granted, this is quite open. So, this approach over here is, you know, is, is quite an aggressive approach. But I would say of, of the list of players that we have, one player who would comfortably go forward and not really quick wall initially would be Vivi. That's that's my guess for Tamerlane thus far. But again, we'll see this whole series and, and try and figure it out over time. So, so um, to those of you who listen to every word that I say, have been here since the start, and, you know, already know this information. I, I want to just put this out there. Appreciate you guys, but you have to understand, I'm going to have to answer some questions throughout the day today and repeat myself. <laughs> okay? So, I'm going to repeat myself a lot today because this could be confusing for people. And, uh, you know, people are going to ask these questions. So, these heroes are not used in the main event of Hidden Cup. The list is already out if you want to see that. And then this is not featuring main event players. This is featuring players who played in the qualifier. Lots of Vils in queue here for Tamerlane. Hmm. That's a rather specific thing. Who who gets nervous and over queues Vils? I'm feeling Capoch again. Actually, I've seen Capoch do that a lot. I don't know. There's just moments in my brain that get stuck in my brain that I just can't get out. It'd be like Capoch against, uh, against Fire, maybe? That'd be crazy to call it off an Arabia game. I don't I don't know. I don't know, man. I like the skirms. The skirms are gonna neutralize this attack. Daniel. Ooh, Daniel's a fun guess, actually. Farming away here. Eco looks really good for Tamerlane. Tamerlane, of course, is not walled though. And mines can be dangerous in the later stages. David says, How would you contact the players if there needs to be a re? David, I appreciate you worrying about it, but I do have admins. <laughs> I have admins who are on it. I appreciate your concern, though. Just in case there needs to be a re. Yeah, so this was all organized. Basically, I said this would be my ideal time for the show match. 
Um, what I need is a list of players it could be. And, uh, you know, and then I'll show up to cast it. And that's what we've done here. So we're going to do a, this best of seven today. And we'll do a best of seven tomorrow. And just to give everyone a taste. So doesn't seem like William Wallace is going to consider going for plumes. Yeah, William Wallace actually sold some of that stone just to get a good dub time here. Largely uh, inactive game. Uh, uh, you know, on a, not really the most exciting Arabia game ever. William Wallace made sure that he could stay in this game with the early walls. Early alls, walls with Mayans, again, that's something that you should do with the cheap walls. Um, you also should be concerned being out in the field right now if your opponent has skirmishers. So William Wallace just falling back, playing very defensively. But it does, it does make you think, who would play this defensive, this passive at the start? Who would like Mayans game number one? Who would like Khmer and still not be walled at this stage? Hmm. A lot of players would still be walling. You know a player on that list that says screw walls sometimes? It's, I'm just, it just says I'm not doing it. Danny boy, man. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Daniel right now. No walls. Scouting the map. Would always like to see a little bit of walling in these situations because you don't know when your opponent's going to surprise you. But I imagine the plan is to maybe drop a TC here. The back area is walled. Also, lots of house walling. Ooh, this is also a Brazilian thing. Hmm, it's Brazil. It's Dogal against Dogal, guys. <laughs> Honestly, I could still see Dogal against fire or something. In before T90 says both players are all 12 possibilities before the end of game one. Robo, stop it. You're supposed to be on my side. Look at Robo talking smack. He's my employee, chat. No, he's not. <laughs> he's my admin, and he's talking smack. I've only said, like, six of them. Not 12. All right, that's also, like, part of the requirements. I, I mean, there's no, there's no list of requirements, but... Uh, pretty much, to be friends with me... To be to work with me, you gotta be you gotta be talking smack about me. So that basically means that everyone who watches me live is eligible, because that's all people tend to do. No elite skirm upgrade here from Tamerlane. Double stable knights with the leftover skirms is the plan. Did drop the second TC. Now William Wallace doesn't know his opponent isn't investing into elite skirm, so is probably concerned and will back away. Meanwhile, TC outside of the base for William Wallace. I really like that. But William Wallace is just unable to really do too much with this right now. And Tamerlane's eco, again, is looking really strong here with the Khmer. We'll have knights, we'll have skirms. But also can't necessarily break Wallace at the moment. Hmm. The scouts and knights going in here on the walls. I mean, this feels like a very unlikely area to be able to break through. But Tamerlane's still hoping to force the issue. William Wallace is really building up that crossbow mass. If you can get to like 15, 20 crossbows with combination of eagles, it can be really strong here. This is nice from William Wallace. Able to defend. Able to expand the eco. Does need to be careful here though. Tamerlane could actually run underneath the TC. And yeah, Wallace preps a house knowing that possibility's there. But these skirms not being elite pretty much means that, you know, the crossbows are going to be more than fine in defense here. And Tamerlane is just still, like, running into a wall every time. And is probably not going to be able to break his opponent. Now, we've got Scorpions advancing forward. Wow, lots lots of army all the time. Still being a pain with this army. The Skirms will likely just need to be left behind here, though. And the Knights need to get away. Wow, even more Knights. This is crazy. Yo, Richie, thank you very much for the gift of subs, man. Hmm... We've got scorpions. We've got knights. Action continues. And there's a lot of sleuths, man, asking all types of questions. Look at you sleuthers, chat. Guys, so-and-so is streaming right now. But wait, are these live? Are these recorded games? These are actually Rex. So if anyone is streaming right now, this could it could still be them. Which doesn't help the sleuthers. I'm sorry. Look at the amount of micro... And the amount of army control here from Tamerlane. Just hasn't lost a lot of army needlessly, besides those skirmishers, of course. And these scorpions, with the Khmer, are in the perfect position to keep William Wallace off of this gold. And Wallace does not seem to have any control right now. 
That's Hammer Lane's played amazing. Yeah, all of these Spearmen are going to go down. The Scorpions, for the most part, are going to stay alive. It looks like two of these Scorpions will still stay in it. Villagers could still get ranged by this. There's a third TC for William Wallace. And I'm, I'm still thinking, like, right now, we have a very defensive player who... So it tells me, like, a classic pro, right? So I would say someone who's been around for, like, 8 to 10 years, which is maybe everyone on the list. Player who really prefers that mezzo opening. If I had to guess a player right now... No, okay, Classic Pro is one of the players. I didn't mean Classic Pro. I meant a Classic Pro. There's a difference. Uh, but if I had to pick right now... I would still lean towards fire for William Wallace. He is known for this. Walls, three TCs. And sometimes a defensive play can be a weak point for him. We could see Vivi maybe as well. Vivi would definitely be able to do something like that. Look at that. Converts a knight. Uses the knight to kill both scorpions. What a sick job. And, I mean, eco count is 66 or 67 to 68. Army count is similar. Crossbow mass is still there. Stone count coming in for William Wallace to build a castle. William Wallace might actually be in the better position here soon. Um, resources collected for Tamerlane, of course, pretty strong. But third TC just now coming up. I really like the eco upgrades from both. And there's a castle now from William Wallace. Interesting situation. There is a hole here. As far as I could tell, there's an overchop. And William Wallace notices that when the knights showed up to attack. Like, what type of player would do this? This seems like someone who's used to the... Wants the map to be open and wants to be aggressive. Just attacking there with those two knights, you're never going to break through. But players who have the higher speed are going to want to do that. And they're going to want to try this as well. Three knights looping around. And then here... Oh, this is brutal for Tamerlane. Tamerlane ran in towards a monk. Actually loses another knight. And every time William Wallace converts these knights, these knights are turning around to snipe scorpions. This is going to be like the sixth or seventh scorpion that's gone down here for Tamerlane. Brutal situation there. And Eco is really expanding for William Wallace now behind this castle. And there might be more castles soon. But this game will go imp. It's definitely going imp. Vil count still dead even. We have a fourth TC now for Tamerlane. Crazy economy. So yeah, there is money on the line for this show match. Uh, $200 to whoever wins. $100 to whoever loses. Also, these guys get to play their role. They wanted to be in the main event of Hidden Cup. So they get to, you know, have some fun. And be... Watch people try and guess who they are, right? I wonder if people get offended. Like, uh, would like a slow player get offended? Or not a slow player. A fast player get offended if uh, someone guessed a slower player for them? I don't know about offended, but they might be a little bit annoyed. <laughs> like, come on, I'm not him. Are you kidding me? Knights get pulled back to heal up. We're going to see relics come in for Tamerlane as he knows this is going to go late. And, uh, yeah, it, I mean, Imp, Imp is, is definitely going to come in. Look at the stone walls even from William Wallace. Really embracing the William Wall is in his name. This gold needs to be claimed. This gold needs to be claimed. That's the neutral. We'll see about that. And Imp is now on the way for William Wallace. T90, if you must bet now who will win this, who would you choose? It's a really tricky one. It's really tricky. I'm going to say Tamerlane because Tamerlane's playing with a ton of army and seems to be like really set up here to go really aggressive. But I think Mayans are superior here. And I think how William Wallace is playing this, like securing extra stone, playing in towards walls, playing extremely safe. I think Hal Barbales could be insane here. But I'm not seeing crazy army production yet from Wallace. It's still just really passive play. It'll just come down to if Tamerlane could potentially break the opponent. Like What I like about Tamerlane's play right now is Tamerlane forces that knight to be deleted. Um, outposts on the sides, sending a knight here to sit on the neutral gold. These are the types of things you want to do. So, in theory, it could be four relics for Tamerlane and both neutral gold protected. I think William Wallace is going to need the a big central push, maybe even a forward castle next to this gold. 
but I mean it's been a pretty economic game right we see we've seen more aggressive games on Arabia just hasn't been how things have gone uh Nicholas thank you for the new prime thank you atomic thank you Omega so many new subs man Randy, eight minutes ago, says, all right, Tamerlane, 100% fire now. Okay, so eight minutes ago, Randy said that. Randy, have you changed your tune, though? After seeing more of the game? I don't know. Fire doesn't typically play this open, but the house walls is something we've seen. Players may also change their style for the show match. I don't know. Here comes the attack, and here come the villagers. Oh, man, dude. Oh, man. Oh, man. This could be crazy. And there's the castle from William Wallace. This is a massive army right now. And he's going to have Bracer. And oh, God. Okay, now, guys, Doubt is not playing in the show match. Doubt is in the main event. But right now, we are very close to a Doubt castle. Castle is going to go up. The crossbows are getting some nice kills, though. Bracer being in means these knights aren't going to survive all that long. At the same time, a lot of pikes were thrown away, right? You would have wanted those pikemen to stay alive. I do think a lot of these knights are still weak, though. The crossbow certainly did enough. And it seems like villagers that were on the sides building outposts are being found. Even a stable there from Tamerlane right on the gold. And he's going to mine that right now. And Tamerlane is three relics, about to be four. The fourth one is coming home and is going for cavalier and armor now. So Wallace wanted to, to finally break out of his shell here. Quick walls. Quick walls needed. Quick walls. The knights realize they cannot advance through there. Another really good fight there for uh, William Wallace, though. That castle still weakened a lot of the knights. Okay, so top players in the world all should be able to quick wall. I don't think that tells you much. That should all be expected. And now final armor is in for the knights, but they're not cavalier yet. I don't know if you want to take this fight. I mean, maybe he's taking it because these aren't arbalest yet, and there's no halbs here. I don't think that's a good fight. Maybe it is a good fight. Am I wrong? I think I'm wrong. And look at this army coming in from Tamerlane. Maybe the fight's good enough so we could win the treble. Remember, he has the relics, and it is actually good enough. And that's why I'm not playing in the show match. I would have maybe backed away there. Against Halb and against Crossbows with Bracer, but the armor was in and the Trebs have gone down. And now, five relics for Tamerlane. And that castle is going to go down and this gives Tamerlane a lot of time to decide on what you do next. Very rare that I think you'll see this be a good option on Arabia. But I actually think going Heavy Scorpion now makes a lot of sense. Normally, mobility is an issue, but against the Mayans when they don't have stables, I think going for multiple barracks and scorpions is the play here. T90 claiming not to be playing means he is one of the players. I mean, look at these farms, dude. Well, yeah, I mean, could be me. Could be me. Another castle here from Tamerlane. The Tamerlane has barely walled at all. Has full vision on the map. This castle will protect this hill, which is really important, right in the middle of the map. And we'll just see if William Wallace can fight back here. William Wallace never really maxed out on the crossbows, which I think hurts. Because if you if you have Arbalest and Halb, man, can you devastate your opponent. But having only Halb in this situation is a problem. Not really seeing the proper reactions here from Tamerlane. And William Wallace definitely lacking a little bit of sharpness at times. But I think it's because Tamerlane is attacking from all these different angles. Oh man, Tamerlane killed another Treb there. And there it is, guys. Double crossbow. Let's freaking go, dude. Let's freaking go. Double crossbow. Double crossbow heavy scorpions are going to destroy here. I also love how Tamerlane was able to get into the back and split up the Cavalier. That's so annoying. It must feel brutal right now to be William Wallace. First game. Obviously, you know, you don't have any relics in the bank or anything, but your population still 180 pop. So it feels to me like William Wallace should absolutely continue to play on until he's killed off here, but it does feel like it's inevitable. Siege Engineers even coming in. And then Heavy Scorp should be in behind it. These Scorpions alone can kill this. They'll have two bolts now. They'll have the extra range. And then also there's going to be the uh, Heavy Scorpion upgrade. 
Okay, this is interesting. Um, this castle might be denied. Meanwhile, Cavalier into the eco from Wallace. And we see the Scorpions do work. They're not even fully upgraded yet. It's still a Castle Age Scorpion. Let's go. Textbook, though, stuff from Tamerlane, right? Bring four Trebs. Sit on the hill. Go for the castle. Force a reaction from your opponent, which he did. And this castle went up. And this army now has to find somewhere else to raid. I mean, it, it's just really hard to kill a lot of villagers with that army. But there's still no way to stop the main force. I think Mayans would have to go Onager, maybe? Maybe? The Trebs are going after the Trebs. It does feel like William Wallace is struggling here. And it's probably soon going to be the end of this game. The Cav run in again to get another snipe. Well played there from Tamerlane, who's been the aggressor the entire game. I wonder if we should do a vote after each game. I wonder if that's too much. I'm kind of tempted to see what the community thinks after game number one. We will have a vote after the series, at least. Maybe we should keep moving through the games. But William Wallace is getting completely stomped right now. And now Scorpions have come home to defend. And it's a good day when Heavy Scorpion is on the menu, guys. We very rarely see this. But like I said, against Mezzo... A uh, civilization that can't make horses? I think it's really solid. And the GG's called. Wow. Heavy speculation, though. Both of these players calling GG in lowercase. Guys, only 95% of the player base does that. Who? What does that mean? Who could these people be? Crazy stuff. What a crazy moment to end the game. Uh, Tamerlane just stomped that first game. Seemed very comfortable on Arabia. Seemed to want to play more open, more aggressive. William Wallace was more of a defensive player. Um, which does lead to some, some guesses. Uh, here's the APM. Now, during the main event of Hidden Cup, we won't actually have this. But it looks like this implies the players are of similar speed. Good stuff. Good series. Uh, hopefully for us anyways. And that was game one. These freaking guys. Okay. Before we launch this, I think we have to appreciate this. Game one, one of the players had color four and the other player had color five, okay? Game two, they now have switched to color seven and they have switched to color eight. So these guys, even though it's a show match, even if they're not main event players, they're trying to change their colors to mind game everybody. So we're going to put Wallace back in the yellow and we're going to put Tamerlane back in the blue. But anytime we change the colors, guys, the original color pick is right at the bottom right there next to their names. Okay, so the speculation is is just, it's crazy at this point, right? Both players have tried to mind game each other with color picks. I love it. We've got Dravidians for Tamerlane. We've got Armenians for William Wallace. Now, Wallace lost the first game, picked Mayans, and played with lots of walls. Um... And, and so my gut was saying maybe someone like Fire. Uh, Fire's a player who's been around a long time, has more of a defensive play these days, and would, would really like to pick Mezzo in game number one. And then Fire used to be known as the best Islands player in the world. So, you know, for someone to opt for Islands as their rebound pick, I could see that being maybe Fire, maybe Dogal, or something like that. Um, Armenians are seen as insane but I think the Dravidians are also seen as insane on island, so we'll see how the matchup goes. But again, everybody, this is a show match. These are We have a list of 12 players who lost in the qualifier who could potentially be these players here. And they do not know who they're playing against, and we do not know who is, is playing. So, should be good fun. Um, players are very close together here. Now, they won't be able to pick up on that that easily. Um, they, they will only pick up on that when they're scouting out with their ships. But even the neutral islands, too. Everything's very condensed here. And then there's a lot of open space over here towards the right side. If anyone has questions about Hidden Cup or just wants to say hello, this is a good time for it. I uh, can break down this matchup a little bit more so as we go. Islands, obviously, more of a chill start. And then the show match is meant to, of course, hype people up about Hidden Cup. So Hidden Cup main event is now eight days away at this point. So... Will the players guess who they're opposing? Yeah, at the conclusion of the series, the players will also guess, which will be super fun. So we'll have the community vote. We have a new poll program, which we're actually testing today on stream. So you guys will be able to vote on who you think is who. 
And then the players as well will guess who they think they played against. Will be interesting to see if the show match players can pick up on things. T90, is the YouTube chat connected? The YouTube chat is not on screen. No, the YouTube chat cannot be on screen. Those are just Twitch rules. Obviously, like, great that they allow Twitch partners now to multi-stream to other platforms, which is great to reach more people. But they also have some some type of restrictions. And Twitch partnership is really important to me, so I don't want to jeopardize that. But we did add the, the ability to sub and whatnot on YouTube as well for the people that want some emotes there. But we have to add a lot more. Because um, I think it only let me start with five or something like that. So forward dock right now from Wallace, and then a forward dock from Tamerlane, which would indicate uh, either a galley or fire opening, or a transport. Now the Armenian galleys are insanely strong because they fire that second bolt. So I don't think I would want to go into a galley war against Armenians. I think I might want to transport against Armenians and make it messy. I could see Tamerlane trying that here. Again, players will have to decide basically how they spend their wood at this point. They're going to go for the second fishing ship. Then we could see the follow-up with the transport, or we could see a third and then a transport. You're never going to see four fishing ships in a transport due to timings. A transport needs to come in a lot faster. T90, will hero pictures be visible during matches in Hidden Cup? Yeah, the casting, up, the casting program will look different as well. We will also have new end of game things with Capture Age during the main event, but none of that stuff is ready yet. Um, I tried to get the images for the heroes up here in Capture Age, my normal version of Capture Age, and there was just a giant red X instead of the images I selected. So, yeah, that kind of sucked. So, sorry we don't have the images on screen. It'll look better for the main event. So, here comes the transport. So... I, like I said, I think against Armenians, this is something you have to consider. And transporting has been part of the meta here. Conscious player decision. And players, if they started with the transport, could maybe like use it to scout block fishing ships and get more intel. But on islands, which is a classic map, you assume some things and then you have to find out. And you do not want to find out that your opponent is right next to... Ah! You don't want to run right into the fishing ships! No! <laughs> Whoops! That sucks. And, uh, well, William Wallace definitely saw that. And William's like, sup? And Tamerlane's like, Tamerlane's like, hey. But, uh, right now, there's no loom. Oh, there is loom, excuse me. And, okay, back into the transport. And second dock for Wallace still. I mean, Wallace knows this is happening, but Wallace can't stop it from happening. This could still be really dangerous. And we have a barracks at home from Tamerlane. So Tamerlane wants to build... Hmm, the archer range here. Fascinating stuff. I think it's a little a little messy from Tamerlane. I think this, though, was because he thought his barracks wasn't going to be on time here. Ooh. So, yeah, this might mean that Tamerlane needs to shift back into doing something on water. We might see the game plan abandoned here for a second. Like, maybe see a second dock. Oh, we have another transport! What? Huh? So, sorry, it's the same transport, but we have two more Vils going into this one from Tamerlane. Well, okay. I don't think William Wallace is ever going to expect that. Okay, who said Vivi before? <laughs> yeah, I am very much feeling Vivi vibes, dude. I'm feeling huge Vivi vibes with this one. Okay, we have Houses and Palisade. Okay, so William Wallace is going to see this and try and wall it in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, I like this. Okay, so now those villagers are trapped. But there's an archer range over here. Let's go. Let's go. Who is this player, man? Now, the fishing ships are also being brought forward to fish on that forward dock. Oh, and Wallace found them. Man, I think it was Sobek who did this in the qualifier. Where he brought forward the fishing ships. Mm, well, it's been found, and that's a really nice find there for Wallace. And Wallace should be able to defend his own fishing ships. But Wallace doesn't know that there is an archer range over here. Like, uh, we have a tower here from Tamerlane. Sorry to not show this. Uh, I, I just assumed the villagers 
would just die here. Oh, wait, what? Okay, well, villagers are dead. Tower was forced down kind of in the middle of nowhere, though. And there can be archers that eventually surprise William Wallace here. It's like, right now, if you're William Wallace, you're living the dream. You killed the forward villagers. You're winning on water, and you killed your, some of your opponent's fishing ships as well. Tamerlane does still have some fish, does still have a dock to produce fires, but hasn't really done too well so far. Hmm. Still thinking about who these players might be. Amazing start for William Wallace. Five kills, zero deaths. Just does not know about this. Because who's going to expect it to happen again? It was so quick from Tamerlane to do that. Archer range is coming up for Wallace, though. I think archer range could indicate maybe some archers will be transported across from William Wallace. He might make a transport ship and head over, which could be really strong. It's going to be good to have that archer range if the opponent shows up with archers as well. But I don't think the numbers are going to be there. And fletching archers from Tamerlane can run right in here and kill so many bills. It's got to happen fast, though, because William Wallace's eco is set up perfectly at the moment. And there's still fishing ships. And yeah, precisely what we said. William Wallace is going for a transport ship. This, I know I said fire before. I, I just reinforces my feeling about uh, this player. Picking islands. How game two, how game one was played out with Mezzo. Now the transport ship to send archers across, which isn't something that happens that frequently, but is old islands meta. That's something players who played islands a lot back in like 2015 would do. That's where I'm at at the moment. Here come the archers. Here comes Tamerlane. Tamerlane running through. Now William Wallace won't see this. William Wallace is thinking about Castle Age. Clicked up to Castle Age, but William, you've got a bigger problem here. And extreme patience here from Tamerlane, who went to the far side of the wood line before firing. So you can kill more villagers that way. And here we have it. Villagers going down. And not only villagers going down, but villagers being pulled off of wood and gold. Beautiful play there from Tamerlane. Killed three villagers with that. And now, of course, there's no pressure happening at his island. Because all the focus is here. Now, the transport ship is still out there for Wallace, and Wallace could eventually uh, head over to Tamerlane's Island. But it doesn't look like it's going to be all that easy at the moment if you have archers from, to defend from. Could have been worse, though, because you had the mule cart just wheel over here to take this gold. There's still wood income. And at the end of the day, there are still fishing ships out there for William Wallace. There's still fishing ships as well for Tamerlane. The five fishing ships over here, those were new. And we should see the click up from Tamerlane to Castle Age here as well. It's been a fun game. This was the main event. We'd see players getting housed. And I think the chat would be saying MBL. MBL also likes to make it very messy, which we did have some of this game. You know, another thing I'm realizing, it does feel like these players are not from similar regions. It could just be play style, but it definitely feels like they are playing... On a on a higher ping than if it was um, if it was players playing um, in like a more neutral server. Now there are instances like if players are from the same region. Uh, oh man, this is going to be a big fight. If they're from the, the same region, there are instances where we might give them a server that is like you know 40 ping higher. So it's still like 70 ping, which is still low ping. But this feels like 100 plus for both. Would just be my guess. Which would mean, you know, they had to be like a neutral server because they might be far apart. But yeah, obviously it's not MBL because he's in the main event. The players in the show match here are not in the main event of Hidden Cup. But they were in the qualifier. And they are good names. And they are known names. Did we ever see a transport utilized here from Wallace? We did not because he lost most of his units. He lost a lot of his defensive units to these scouts and these archers. And Wallace... Defended initially, but didn't expect the follow-up transport. Is looking to see what Tamerlane is doing over here. Tamerlane's built another dock here, guys. Still fishing away. Like, resources collected is evened out because of those fish. And is still untouched at home. Obviously, big fights on water still need to happen here. Good micro and good repairs from Tamerlane. Trading evenly there. 
War Galley upgrade hasn't been clicked by any player yet. That would be nice in these fights, but it seems like Wallace is a bit more distracted because of this army. And the Warrior Priest is going to get picked off by some scouts. And you do get one relic instantly when you make the uh, Fortified Church. So there is that. But beyond that, there's not going to be any more relics coming in anytime soon here. For Wallace, if these scouts are patrolling around. And I really like Tamerlane's position right now. Hmm. Your problem, AoE, says maybe these players are a bit slower because they don't play as, as well as the qualified players. No, these guys are... Whoever these players are are top 40 talents. They're insanely fast and insanely precise. <laughs> there are some players in the list, though, that are a bit messier. Like, like Vivi, for example, is probably the highest level player who does not have as, like, technical as micro as some of the other players out there. Man, Tamer Tamerlane is just mopping up here. Great find. The scouts have been... So have gotten him so much value and then he still hasn't given up on water and that's the problem guys like landings i don't have actual stats to go off of right now but landings have been incredibly successful in the qualifiers and now this show match simply because it makes it messy it doesn't give the players who want to go for water a clean game william wallace is getting stomped here though he has to delete that night he wasn't expecting there to be monks and it's just like one thing after the other that's going wrong here for wallace Love how Tamerlane has played ever since, you know, that backup transport. The backup transport completely changed the game. Scouts still roaming around. Dravidians can't make knights, but light cav upgrade could be nice. I think these warrior priests are about to hop inside of this uh, transport ship to get relics from a neutral island here. Couple random spears and skirms around. We've got Siege as well here from Wallace, who must be so paranoid those villagers are going to be building up more on his base. But not having to worry about knights is kind of is kind of a nice thing here. And Tamerlane hasn't really been producing that much on water, but does still have the water. And is actually going to use the monks here on the shoreline to maybe convert those fire ships. Like, every time... William Wallace looks at his base. There's more scouts in it. It must be so frustrating. It's crazy. And then the monks are here. And both fire ships get converted. Oh, man. This is a beatdown. Man, Tamerlane's playing like a god here. Sick. It's so smart. Also picked up the relics, too. Like, not making it easy for the Armenians to get relics. Here are the warrior priests getting these relics. That is really smart thinking here from Wallace. And that would end up being three. Kind of interesting too. Still no light cav upgrade. Look at the micro there from Tamerlane. Pulls these other things away with the weak scout. Goes in for more. Scout still moving around. Someone says, could Tamerlane be freaking Andy? It could be freaking Andy. It's one of the options. Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not. Doesn't feel like freaking Andy to me. Thus far, I, I'm still thinking. I still leaning towards like Daniel or Vivi for Tamerlane. I, I don't know why. Beautiful trap here from Wallace though, who's sick and tired of dealing with these scouts. Beautiful play. Spears are probably okay. How nerdy this player is with scouts determines if it's Vivi or Daniel or or any of the players for that matter. Let's see how nerdy the scout player is. Oh, he tries to escape. Okay, can't escape. Keeps moving. Nerd, nerd factor's definitely going up. Okay, still, now that scout's 6 HP. Does he micro it still? Bro. I mean, he did. I guess it wasn't that crazy. <laughs> but there was some nerdage there, for sure. Nerdage is a word that I invented recently. It's a, it's a fun word. We're going to use that a lot during Hidden Cup. Hmm. So, it just seems like Tamerlane more and more is gaining all this control. Still has monks over here. Still has solid control over the this area. Making it difficult for Wallace to make decisions. And at home, there's just TCs going up and farms being added. And here the scouts go in for a scorpion. The spearmen commit suicide so they don't switch sides. The one spearman who doesn't ends up switching sides. There's, a, there's something over here attacking. Like, And meanwhile, it's just... Easy economy at home for Tamerlane. For Tamerlane to win this game, though, Tamerlane does also need to take control of the sea. 
And right now, you can tell Tamerlane is trying to do that around the backside and the front. But usually, from here, it's... If you gain a big lead in Castle Age, you should be in the superior position in the Imperial Age. Interesting where the players are fighting on water here. Usually, a player has a dock or two on their own island. There's no docks over here anymore <laughs> for Tamerlane. He's just back-docked his opponent. Like, he's, he's overfishing his opponent's side. This is pretty wild. I don't think we saw that in any of the qualifiers. Like, maybe one dock with a couple fish, but this guy's continued to make more. Gold count is insane for Tamerlane right now, who could maybe buy some food. But it's never something that you feel that comfortable doing, buying food. Because you want to save that gold, but at the same time, you could just win the game if you make it to the Imperial Age faster, so it might be worth it. William Wallace is in the state of, like, defense, which he has tried desperately to get out of, but he just he just can't seem to find the answer. Um, you know, the warrior priests are not going to be it against Lightcap. He's Lightcap. Uh, the, any of the Lightcap that Tamerlane has made, he's gotten such great value from. He always knows when to attack. He always knows when to be defensive. And Tamerlane does buy 500 food here, so Tamerlane is going to click up soon to the Imperial Age. Four relics is a good idea. Or, or a good idea, sorry. It's obviously a good thing here for Wallace. But we'll see. I think Tamerlane could end up having a similar amount. And Imperial Age and more Navy is definitely the play here for Tamerlane, who I'm guessing is forgetting a building. And is actually going to drop a defensive monastery now with the university, obviously, as the other building. Like have continued to just snipe. Like, I'm feeling kind of bad for Wallace at the moment. <laughs> Anybody else agree? Like, Wallace doesn't know who his opponent is. Both players have been a little bit tricky with their... Like, like again! More monks going down. Both players have been tricky with picking different colors and whatnot here. Definitely feels like, so far, Tamerlane has been the more aggressive player, and he's been very comfortable with the aggression. There's a castle in the middle from Tamerlane. Yeah, when you think of defensive players who played in the qualifier, Andy's definitely one that comes to mind. Um, you also have, like, uh, again, Fire. I think Vivi can be... Vivi can be pretty defensive at times, too. Maybe a player like Valus. Valus is pretty defensive. I'm still trying to think of who else is on that list. Catwatch can be pretty defensive as well. So, yeah, it could be quite a few players here. And actually, these relics are going to come in for Wallace. And there's a castle going up for Tamerlane on the neutral island, which is fantastic. And more archer ranges here. I just... Okay, guys, let's let's just go for more guesses. Right? Game feels like it's going to be really tough for Wallace to come back. Starting with Tamerlane? Chat, go for your guesses. Who do you got? That's such a good castle. Won the first game, played very pretty open. Okay, we have people saying main event players. So, it's not main event players. We've got Veleza. That's a good guess. I think Veleza's a solid guess. We got Dogal, Valis, Andy, Vivi. Hmm, interesting. And then a couple Daniels. I, I don't want to sway the chat here. I'm still on Team Daniel. A confirmation would be if things start to go wrong and he resigns early when he loses a game if we see an early resign from tamerlane it is daniel confirmed <laughs> but so far things have gone right for tamerlane so <laughs> we've had no early resigns william wallace was a big fighter in the first game even when things looked bad we'll see what happens here imp is going to be in for william wallace william wallace still trying to fight back on water but Tamerlane has all these docks going up. And it's going to have fast fire ships soon. And a lot of the docks are still on the back. Like the back side of the opponent's base. It's got to be so awkward to be Wallace. Like Wallace has a castle in the middle to deal with. Has army on land. And then has navy coming from the front and the back. I really don't know what to suggest to a player in this position. I guess with the six relics you always think you've got a chance. Six relics is no joke in the long run here. And Armenians are no joke with their navy in the long run, too. We do have the Arbalest upgrade right now from Tamerlane. So Tamerlane really wanting to play land. Perhaps an indicator again 
of who this player might be instead of just going into galleons. Here come the fires. Now, Wallace, I think, should overall just ignore the docks on the back and fight for the middle. Maybe Tamerlane's navy on the backside isn't really denying anything right now. But it does feel like, you know, there's just too many different areas where pressure could be coming in. That's a lot of monks on ships there. Very good monk control there. So maybe that's telling. Fires continue to loop around. And Tamerlane has a treb in the middle, just slowly taking out these docks. Really think what Tamerlane needs is Galleon, but Tamerlane doesn't give a crap about Galleon. Tamerlane's like, I'm on your base, bro. I'm going to go Arbalest. And there is no answer to Arbalest for William right now. So this is a really, really good addition. It feels like the Arbalest can deny most of these golds. Can maybe get into the back here, get into this eco. And yeah, this game is probably over. This is brutal right now. But Tamerlane's played amazing here. Drummond's on the way here for William Wallace. Drummond's can be strong. Still missing a lot of text, though. That can be good for the Armenian Navy. I just don't know if the resources are there. There's 300 food with 6 on food. I mean, it just feels like William Wallace is completely uh, up against it here. I, I, I just, I think at this point, you're just screwed. Refuses to accept it. Still continues to fight. Okay, so William Wallace is definitely not Daniel. I would bet my life on that. Seeing a lot of monks being used as an answer. Monks block printing against Arbalest. All the monks are on a different target. Maybe Andy? Maybe Valas? Andy and Valas, both known for their heavy monk play. But maybe see it. That was apparently a decent fight there for William Wallace. We have a one villager castle from Tamerlane here, by the way. Who just continues to not give a crap. One villager castle. And these archer ranges continue to produce more arbs. Still no galleon, though. It's funny how Tamerlane's not really focusing on water anymore. That treb's gonna get shot down. Also, there is a treb here that is trebbing this castle, so that'll need to be dealt with. But still, resources is just insane for Tamerlane right now. If Tamerlane could just go shift into water, he could be okay. His bombard cannon's gonna be converted. And the villager dies! The villager got sniped by the bombard cannon. That's the only vill here. The other one died earlier. So now that castle will never be completed, and whoever this player is has to delete it. Tamerlane's gotta be like, are you kidding me? Anyways, uh, I mean, Treb's going to pay the price. And we do still have Navy being produced here from Tamerlane behind this. But yeah, Dow confirmed. Dow confirmed, guys. It's the main event. Yeah, I guess converting a villager could be an idea. But uh, I think maybe just don't build a one villager castle next to a trebuchet anyways. <laughs> still feels like Tamerlane's just waiting to kill this Navy. And then he can push the middle. I mean, he is still slowly making progress here, and William Wallace really doesn't want to call it quits. Uh, William Wallace must feel like with six relics, maybe there's a chance. Like on any other map, maybe we see a player resign, but because of the six relics and knowing how you can eventually run out of resources on this map, you never want to resign when you've got six. The thing is, though, like wood control is going to be a problem here for William Wallace. William Wallace is soon out of trees, and this army can't be dealt with. We've even got the guard tower upgrade coming in. Okay, monks go again. And the Arbalest were waiting. The light cab are waiting as well. Now some of the relics are gone and the GG's finally called. And so far in this show match, Tamerlane has looked really strong. It was crazy to me. The initial transport got spotted and Tamerlane just got two more vills and wandered over here and transported anyways. That was extremely impressive. Because so many people are like, oh crap, I already lost two vills. I'm screwed now. I have to go water. That's probably what I would have done. But no, he just tried it again and William Wallace didn't expect it. And then everything snowballed out of control. Beautiful play there from Tamerlane. Yet again, these are players that are not playing in the main event. These are players who played in the qualifier. I'll show you the list again. But we'll find out who these players are at the conclusion of the show match.
But right now, William Wallace definitely seems like he needs to step it up. Reds collected for Tamerlane looks fantastic here. And, uh, oof, man, I'm like, I'm really enjoying the guessing game. So here's the list of players this could be, okay? As a reminder, here's the list. Capoch, Freakin' Andy, Classic Pro, Kingston, Daniel, Margugu, Dark, Vallis, Dogal, Veleza, Fire, and Vivi. All right, these freaking guys keep changing their colors every single goddamn game. Uh, sorry for language. Uh, first game, they were like yellow and teal. Second game, they were gray and orange. Third game, they're now blue and purple. Um, so we're going to go... Tamerlane was what? Where do we have him? No, we had him blue. And we had William Wallace yellow. Okay. So here we are, game number three. Let's let's do it. Now, I clarified this ahead of yes. time. Yes. Um, they're, this is when they were sending Rex to the yes. admins. Um, this is Hidden yes. Cup 4's version of High Tides. Yes. Now, the players are saying yes and yes, yes and yes back to each other constantly right now. They just continue to say yes. And um, we were told that the players didn't have Hidden Cup 4 maps downloaded. And for whatever reason, it defaulted to the Hidden Cup 4 version of High Tides. Now, that could have just been the players being like, oh, crap, we screwed up. And maybe they told a little lie to Robo. I don't know. But unfortunately, the alterations that we made to High Tides for Hidden Cup 5 are not being used in this game. So this is the old version of High Tides. The the updated version for the main event will have shorefish here, will have deer here, uh, will have less in the way of fish in the north and more shorefish. But still, the, the majority of the map is still the same, which is good. And um, it's a very open, aggressive map through the middle. We'll see how things play out, okay? But yeah, Robo seems to think that there's actually a bug where if you have Hidden Cup 5 maps, sometimes the game will default back to previous versions of the maps. So that's... That's fun. That's good to know. DE always finds new and improved ways to make our life more difficult. So we've got the Malians here for William Wallace. William Wallace pushing in two ostrich at once right now. But we've got the Japanese for Tamerlane. Both of these civilizations should be fantastic for this map due to the fact it's hybrid. Now, this version only has the shorefish on the island. So if they want to dock and have their villager on shorefish, it will likely dock very close to one another here. And usually it's like a map where you're going to see water mixed with... Uh, it's, it's kind of similar to Cross in their openings, right? Where you can compete on water... And then you also can compete on land. I guess the thing is, you are always going to be competing for the same area of water. Since there's just one body of it. So it, it is more likely that we are going to see heavy water play here than land. But if you don't go for a lot of land army, you are completely open and could be destroyed at your base. So it's really tricky balance. Academic says, how does that work if you don't have the maps downloaded? Yeah, so like I said, from what I was told... These players had the Hidden Cup 5 map pack, and in the lobby, they selected Hidden Cup 5 High Tides, and it defaulted to Hidden Cup 4 for whatever reason. Um, apparently, my admins were talking about it this morning, and it's something they're going to test, obviously. But yeah. Kind of... Um, I mean, it's not it's not that big a deal, right? I, I'm, I would have preferred to see Hidden Cup 5 uh, be played here. Oh, oh, geez. William Wallace is down two games. William Wallace is not messing around. William Wallace wants to kill this Ville. This dock is at 90%, and the dock is denied. And that is brutal here. Now, William Wallace also has an exposed villager. And now we get to find out if William Wallace could quick wall. And still no loom, but second villager protects and everything's fine. But that's, that's huge. Losing that villager is one thing, but also not having the dock up to make fishing ships is another. That's a massive advantage right now. For good old William Wallace. Tamerlane didn't... He, uh... It, it was a bit of a weird situation there where he retasked his scout a little too early there. So two of his volleys didn't actually do damage to that villager. That villager could have maybe been killed if that would have worked out. But villager's on the way there. We'll complete the dock. But already you can see William Wallace, who didn't lose a villager and has fishing ships, has gained a nice eco lead because of that. Um, both of these heroes were used in Hidden Cup 2. Tamerlane and William Wallace were Hidden Cup 2. I'm not sure why we called William Wallace Willie Wallace in Hidden Cup 2. I'm pretty sure we did, though. 
I don't remember the reasoning there. Here is a dock. Or, sorry, here is a barracks now from Tamerlane. Ooh, Robo, can you tell me if the players knew that they were playing Hidden Cup 4 High Tides? Or did they assume they were doing the Hidden Cup 5 version? Because I could actually see a situation here if they thought they were doing the Hidden Cup 5 version because that's what they selected. Okay, they didn't know until later. Okay, so I could see villagers coming down here to mill and then there not being anything to mill. Yeah. <laughs> that that might happen. <laughs> because how else are players going to be like, hmm, there should be a resource. I guess maybe the shorefish situation could have told them as well, though. Depends on how much. Like, I don't know how much homework they've done on the maps because they're out of the main event. Was there a character limit somehow? Ooh, true. That was probably it. Maybe there was a character limit, which is why we had to do Willy Wallace. How's the scouting right now for Willy Wallace? Well, William Wallace, excuse me, doesn't have a scout anymore. And we have militia moving forward, and those militia are Japanese militia ready to kill. Hmm. T90, this tourney is a great idea. I'm wondering, when did you or who think of it? When did I do it? When did I think of it? It was like 2016? 2017 and yeah it was it was me uh i robo and i were talking about stuff and i was like hey i have an idea what do you think about this and i explained the concept and i was like robo is it possible and he was like well it'd be a little weird but we could try it and here we are years later and this is what happens when you don't have your scout this is a brutal situation right now for william wallace but but militia doesn't get quick walled not the viper confirmed the villagers pulled off of gold that obviously hurts villager then goes down that hurts as well but we've got double fire galley coming for william wallace so should be able to kill the fishing ships and hold control on water still no barracks yet for william wallace i'm really wondering what the meta here is going to be crazy walls from tamerlane like crazy walls here behind this but, like, it feels like if there was an immediate archer range follow-up from Tamerlane, that William Wallace could have some big problems here. But, uh, pros and cons, obviously. You invest into land, you then lose out on water. It seems like Tamerlane expects that. Running away with the villager now. And this could lead to William Wallace adding more fishing ships there, too. So the economy could look really strong. Wall and Boom says Vivi Walls for sure. You think so? This is a player who didn't wall at all at the start in game number one. But, but, Vivi doesn't... There was definitely some Vivi-esque things about how game number one went. Yeah, I don't know where I'm at right now on these guys. Tamerlane? I think... I think Daniel is still my guess. Daniel or Vivi? And then William Wallace... I still feel like fire, maybe. I don't know. But that's also like, those are two of the toughest players. This is something that I factor in because I know and, and you know, hear about this stuff. But I feel like Vivi and fire are two of the toughest to get into a show match. <laughs> so I, like just to get that scheduled and make it happen. <laughs> I think that would be tougher than some of the other combinations, so. <laughs> T90, who was it who wanted to be for you to pick a good hero for them? ACCM. It, when we were at the bar, ACCM pulled me aside. He was like, hey. He's like, hey, T90, I want good hero. Can I see the list? I was like, dude, stop whispering. This is weird. People think we're talking about him. He's like, I want to see the list of heroes. Give me a good one. I didn't like my hero last time. And I was like, how did you not like your hero last time? It was Warwolf. And he's like, no, no good. No good. <laughs> So I showed him the list. He told me his top three. But uh, that we... Oh! Oh, Tamerlane quick wall! Which is kind of interesting. This is just to keep the spear there? That was a fast quick wall there, man. I don't know if Vivi would do that, guys. Daniel would do that. Or Viper confirmed if we're talking main event, of course. But nice quick walls there from Tamerlane. Um... But yeah, we the list that I showed ACCM was before we added some names, so we'll see. I obviously have no say in what hero players are getting, and I told him that. 
As collected right now is looking pretty, pretty good for William Wallace. William Wallace able to fish freely now, which is so strong now. Also does have land army. He's also bringing villagers forward to tower. And Tamerlane is well on the way to Castle Age, but Tamerlane did sell off all the stone to do that. And Tamerlane will know there's no fish available for him. So this, whatever this early attack is, it really needs to get some damage done. Japanese playing into a stable with no fishing ships does not feel like the greatest position right now. Obviously in Castle Age, though, you could do a lot of different things. Tamerlane going to go towards the south now. So again... The players thought they were playing the Hidden Cup 5 version where there would be resources down here. I'm wondering if Tamerlane is about to find out <laughs> that they're on the Hidden Cup 4 version. <laughs> yup, 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 yup. And so now is when Tamerlane's like, wait, I watched the map video. I thought they made changes. Where's the hunt? Where's the stuff down here? And there isn't anything. And guess what? There's a whole lot more crocodiles on the Hidden Cup 4 version than there is in the Hidden Cup 5 version. So now there's that to deal with too. And we don't know who these players are. We just know who they could be. And those, this is going to turn into a siege push, I think. Which does feel natural anyways. But nine fishing ships working away right now for William Wallace is just insane. And I don't know if I like... A, I don't think a siege push feels natural here. The opponent is actually going to be shifting into some knights, too. This is a really nice position for William Wallace to finally get a win on the board. These scouts were hoping to do something. The knight could do something, but there's no upgrades, actually. So, Villagers, though, that were forward are now being attacked. And see how the micro is to save this. Again, if, with no upgrades here, I actually don't think this will accomplish that much. If one villager will go down, but I don't think anything more will go down. William Wallace is going to be up against Siege here soon. There's going to be monks as well from Tamerlane. But remember, Tamerlane does not have any fish at the moment. And those nine fishing ships are helping that food eco so much right now for William Wallace. William Wallace, I think the biggest thing right now he needs is actually knowledge of this. If this was an all-visible type of scenario, it would be very easy for William Wallace to deal with this. But William Wallace does not know that this is happening. And is about to find out, and then needs to quickly damage control. See, so wants to place a house here because William Wallace doesn't know about the siege. Now the siege is here. Tamerlane could have possibly killed the villagers, though. And okay, damage control. Beautiful job here from William Wallace. Just getting a couple extra hits. Now my thinking here is if you have a knight or two... You could maybe deal with this mega now. And that's also why the monks are already on the way from Tamerlane. Really nice push. T90, have you ever considered hidden maps as part of Hidden Cup? Having the players think on their feet more instead of Civ slash meta plays? Mm, hidden maps? Meaning maps that have never been played before? Maps that were tested for weeks and weeks and brought into the main event? Because we already have that. I think seven maps for the qualifier. Bumping it up to 13 maps... For the main event also adds an aspect where there is no meta or at least the meta is not known but fully hidden maps like mega random would would probably be it's an interesting idea i don't hate the idea i don't think it would be something i'd want to do for the the rest of the hidden cup format but hmm really complicated to fight in these scenarios this is actually where having light cav instead of camels or knights would be more helpful for you this could all fall apart very quickly here for Tamerlane. This is why the Siege Monk push is so strong. Because if you go for anything to kill the Siege, the Monks are there. And oh god, the crossbows are going in! And the crossbows pay the price. And also the Siege here gets repaired at the last moment. Good uh, quick walls and good splits here. But man, Tamerlane came to play today. Look at this, man. I mean, the eco back at home... It's all built up to snowball this quickly. And feels like William Wallace needs a big hit with his own siege here in a moment. The Witcher's leaving the berries now. Camels are going to hop out, but the monks are ready. And if the monks are ready, this could be a problem. Oh, but William Wallace, able to back away with the camels, able to get a hit. Beautiful stuff. That wasn't too bad for William Wallace. I know it's still not a great situation, but you just want to slow down this push while you have the fishing ships. 
really difficult to expand your eco in any way when your opponent is on your face like this and you're off your main goal. But maybe a second TC could happen at some point. Like, there it is for William Wallace, but still. Is Tamerlane going to sweep in the show match? Maybe. I don't know. It still feels like if William Wallace can repeat what just happened, this could be fantastic here. Dicey situation there with the crossbow. Showing a bit more confidence, though. Oh, <laughs> man, is really playing a dangerous game. Wow, okay. Who could this be? Those crossbows have gotten close to the siege time and time again. In and out of the TC with the monk, with the villagers. More siege is now on the way. And Tamerlane, still all in one TC. No fish. Does react to that right away. Crazy moments here with the micro. Either player could win the game in an instant, just depending on how the fights go. Ooh, TC gets garrisoned. The monks could actually be shot by the town center fire. Oh man, great job from Tamerlane to realize that and back away. Siege micro continues to be needed. Siege micro really nice from William Wallace. And gets another shot. That one was weak from the initial shot as well. And again, three in a row. And Tamerlane calls the GG. Tamerlane says, uh, get out of here with that crap. Dang. Wow, Tamerlane didn't feel like he could continue to push it there. And William Wallace just held on two TCs. And now a bunch of people in my chat are saying Nikov and Daniel because they think that's an early GG. <laughs> you guys are so mean. Nikov isn't even one of the players it could be. Don't Nikov. Freaking Nikov is going to hate you guys. <laughs> but Daniel is. Listen, I I get why. Okay, so, so this GG was an early GG in some ways, but also at the same time, Tamerlane is experienced enough to recognize that, you know, this is happening behind it, that that push needed to do more than it had done. But, I, in some ways, it does reinforce my feeling that this might be Danny Boyd, too. I could definitely see that. Uh, I, could, I could see why the player resigned, but I have explained why Daniel has resigned early many times throughout my casting career, so. Well played from William Wallace there. I mean, it was weird. It was a bit weird how that game played out. There was some confusion at the start. Tamerlane's start was brutal because the dock was denied. I would have liked to have seen Tamerlane maybe have some Feudal Age follow-up on land. It felt like there was a lot of time to do that. But easier said than done, of course. Ooh, this will be fun. Ladies and gents, welcome to game number four. So this is a show match for Hidden Cup 5. We've got 12 players who lost in the qualifier who these players could be. I don't know who they are. And viewers watching as well don't know who they are. Now, we just did a vote. And if the votes were to be believed, Tamerlane is Daniel. 40% of people think it is Daniel. And then they, uh, like 20% of people think William Wallace is fire. So that's not quite as conclusive. We've got the Aztecs against the Burgundians. And this is the first competitive match that you guys will have ever seen on Hidden Forts, a map that is in the main event of Hidden Cup. So let's break it down. So um, in the middle, between these trees are a lot of rhinos as well as a lot of gold. But to get there, you would have to chop through the trees. Now, beyond the trees is rock terrain where players cannot wall. Uh, in early versions of this, what was happening was players would chop through, walk over to the opponent's side, and wall behind. So this prevents that possibility. But you don't have to go to the middle if you don't want to. You also do have two boars at your base. You do still have the berries. You do still have the sheep. And then outside around the map, you've got various areas for hunt, gold, and stone. So I guess it comes down to player preference. Also, of course, if you choose to chop through the middle, you're going to have worse wood eco. Whereas if you were to maybe lumber camp over here, these trees have 150 wood. And this is incredibly efficient. Yes. So you've got different options. Okay, Tamerlane says check chat, by the way. William Lawless says okay, 14. Okay, so they chatted. And every player should be able to say check chat. BTW, but is there anyone you wouldn't expect them to say BTW here with, guys? People are saying not Vivi. I don't think Vivi would say BTW. I agree. Yeah, I agree with you. So maybe not a Vivi, 
here, Tamerlane, which was, I think, the second vote. Burgundians here for Tamerlane. Eco upgrades coming in age earlier. So in my testing of different versions of this map, we tested like eight different versions. I played dozens of games. And obviously to, to bring it in, I wanted to be comfortable. Um, I wanted to really enjoy uh, the map and, and it felt like it produced good games. Burgundians were really strong on the version where you couldn't wall behind because they could chop through faster with the wood upgrade. But in my testing, the middle is like in some ways overrated i'm really curious to see what people do i think the middle is needed if you want to go for a fast castle because you can take the rhinos i've seen different strategies where players will mill the middle other times players don't choose to do that yeah maybe it's just mind games i love how they have picked different colors basically every game though <laughs> Yeah, you do have to micro your villagers onto these trees, though. Like, right here, for a second there, Tamerlane had one villager chopping another tree. Actually, this is horrible for Tamerlane. Tamerlane did not chop this properly. There's still going to be more trees that have to go through. Oh, shoot. That's actually really bad. Whereas over here, this is just two trees, and William Wallace is going to be through faster. Thank you, X Sparrow, for the Prime. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Great Trober. Thank you, Destination. Thank you, Hammer. Thank you, Warcry. Albus is so excited for Hidden Cup. I need to watch all the prep videos for the event, but life is so busy right now. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm not making it easy for you as well. But, uh, hey, thank you for being here amongst your busy day. Busy life. Camscade, what's up? Thank you for the Prime. And Tamerlane has shown up to William Wallace's base, finds his berries. And that's the thing about the map, right? It is still open on the sides. I could see some players walling this, but... I think fast castles are risky. Taking the middle. If everyone else is going to be in the middle, could be some level of risky as well. Scouting is really important on this map. And then for the main event, players basically... They have, like, all week to practice and train on a map where there's no meta right now. And that's what's going to be fun about this map in the main event. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe William Wallace and Tamerlane, maybe they, they're going to start the meta here. Maybe something will happen and then the players for the main event will think about it. But for now, finally, there's a chop through here from William Wallace. William Wallace gets through and sees the Rhino. So this is where I personally would never take it. But in testing games, some players would take one and bring it to their TC. Uh, obviously, with the Civ like Mongols, you could mill this. I actually have a really funny story. So, uh, El Matador did a training game, and he went Lithuanian's fast feudal age, right? And he used the fast Lithuanian skirms. He brought a skirm in here. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this because main event players might try this. Brought a skirm in here, shot like six different rhinos, and because of the speed of the skirm. The rhinos just kept chasing. Now, it wasn't that consistent, so it's really hard to do. But it was really funny to see. He was being such a nerd, just using skirmishers. I'd never seen anything like that before. More walls from William Wallace. And picked the right player to give, you know, to, to have wall in his name. Checking for a hole, and there is one there. That's a big deal. We've got a barracks behind this from Tamerlane. And this is just fast feudal into eco upgrades right now from Tamerlane. But no extra rhinos being brought in. Looks like there was just a rhino that got brought in there from Wallace. Sorry, I didn't show that. Lots of different things to show you and talk about here. And just a relatively passive opening. Did Wallace find his opponent cutting through, though? He didn't. And double rhino now coming in here from Tamerlane. Tamerlane's like, give me that. I might have the Castle Age farm upgrades, but I'm absolutely going to take some rhino back home. And there you go. And it's well executed so far. Beautiful. Beautiful job. And oh, an eagle is being... <laughs> an eagle is being used. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't hate that. I think this is the first time these guys would have ever played this map. And neither player really put a lot of importance on denying the rhinos from the opponent, it seems like. You don't want to lose that scout, because if you lose the scout, as Tamerlane nerds out, as he's continued to do in this series, 
you lose the scout, you're not going to get the intel you might want. So look, like now if you're in yellow's position, you've walled the sides, but now you're open in the middle. And you need to decide on what you do with that. It's really tricky. So I actually had an, another game on this where I was poles. Because poles can be really strong without the middle gold, right? You can just farm and all this open space. You can take the stones to get some extra gold. There's still plenty of gold. And I never even built a lumber camp to chop through the middle. And my opponent was trying to kill me with a faster imp and all the gold. But they had to chop through the trees to come out. It was really interesting. I, I've had various games where players actually go onager to have to come in and out of this wood area in the late game. Another rhino coming in. Holy. it's a lot of rhinos here. I guess if you have rhinos and then you also have the farms, it could be amazing here for the Burgundians. So I would prefer Tamerlane's current position. But we do have Castlage coming in for William Wallace. And the scout goes down there for Tamerlane. Hmm. Yo, thank you, Cloaked. Cloaked, I got it. Um, says, miss our Rocket League duos, but Hidden Cup 5 is rocking. Wololo Salmon. Salutes, please, for Cloaked. Thank you, man. $100 dono. Holy crap. From my Rocket League partner. Yeah, we haven't... I haven't played... I actually did play a little bit of Rocket League this week when I'm trying to, to settle down in between games. Man, I was not expecting them... Or in between, like, recording stuff. I was not expecting them to take so many freaking rhinos. Using the eagles, too. Thank you so much, man. That's going to be really helpful with some of the things happening with Hidden Cup. So, good to see you, dude. Thanks for sticking around. So, it feels like maybe this could be a Siege Monk push. It'd be very natural for Aztecs to consider doing that. We're seeing some Spears, which would make sense if you're worried about the Burgundians going for Light Cav. And we are going to see Scouts here from Tamerlane, but you have to be careful now. Right? Because this Palisade is not enough to protect you from this push coming through. And the main gold would be exposed. Definitely feels like our yellow player is going to focus more towards the middle right now. Now, we didn't add relics to the middle. I felt like that would make monk pushes too strong. So if you're going like Siege Monk, it's normally a fixed position towards the middle. Having the monks in the middle doesn't help you when it comes to the relics. You still need to go to the outside. Hmm. Another stable here from Tamerlane. You must see that uptime. Does Tamerlane have a market? No market. Clearly, Tamerlane's worried about an all-in here, though, with the stone walls and the outposts and the second stable. There's the Siege Workshop. There's the Monastery from William Wallace in the middle. See how things go. Right now, though, definitely feels like William Wallace's eco is fragile. Doesn't have the eco upgrades the Burgundians do. It's always going to be fragile in comparison, but I'm just wondering, will the attack be worth it? Will the attack be strong enough? I think I would be... I would recommend a Stonewall piece here instead of a Palisade piece. Like this is this is such an important area of the map. And now it's open. Scouts are going to see that, run through. Kind of an awkward area to maneuver through here. And yeah, there's actually the Stonewall from Tamerlane. Smart thinking. Hmm. There's a TC coming up on that wood line for Wallace, who's leaving the initial wood and is now rewalling it. It's just such an interesting situation here. It's like you push the middle, but you don't want to over chop the middle, but you had to chop the middle, but now you don't want to. It's like so awkward. I think Burgundians are just so good at what this game has become. Just booming and making light calf. Aztecs, definitely not a pick I was expecting. Obviously, there's five bands on the Civ Draft here. These guys haven't trained these maps. They don't know what's strong on them necessarily. And it, even though we put a lot of money up, I doubt they would have trained or practiced a lot here. Res Collected looking incredible right now for Tamerlane. And Tamerlane's been very patient as well, I've noticed. But might not be able to be that patient if this house goes down and that gold's exposed. Because there's no other way for Tamerlane to get gold at the moment. House gets deleted. That's a lot of knights, and there's not many monks. And I don't think knights was ever something that William Wallace was expecting here. And knights with the with the light calf should definitely clear this up. Now the monk did go down there for Tamerlane, but Tamerlane ends up killing the entire put. Well, a little awkward. 
but ends up putting a stop to this. Also had the light cab over here, and the monks that were being created here can't hop out now. Actually, I think that fight could have been much better for Tamerlane. He did lose a lot of weak knights there that maybe he could have saved. But he's going to leave his base now and drop a TC outside. Two TCs here for Wallace. Wallace, though, still has monks that need some form of defense. Otherwise, this is going to be a waste. And we see a second barracks now and the pikeman upgrade. But just feels like Wallace just got completely surprised there. And Wallace was not expecting that much army. And the double stable from Tamerlane paid off big time. Really smooth economy. These monks are likely going to go down. And this is brutal. Like, what you would have wanted is you would have wanted the pikes here now. But the timing does not pan out at all there. What's up, Magnet Mood? Welcome. Yeah, these heroes, guys, were used in Hidden Cup 2. So these are retired heroes. These heroes are not heroes that will be seen again in a Hidden Cup. The market happens there for Tamerlane. Tamerlane probably just going to buy stone for TC number 3. Did sell, actually did spend the stone with walls earlier. And Siege Workshop will go down, but this game is not finished. The pikes can still be out there. It's still possible for William Wallace to use the outside to get relics. And res collected is not as bad as it can be when uh, someone's up against the Burgundians. But now it's like it, it becomes fortified clearing style, right? Like this, this is kind of, if I were to compare this to any map, it is like fortified clearing. Only the clearing has to be cleared by you. And uh, there's there's more difficult elements, I think. Especially with the timing and whatever else, so. Yeah, and then relics being on the outside should mean the light cav go to the outside, and that's exactly what Tamerlane is doing. But doesn't seem like Wallace is actually finished with the idea of maybe pushing the middle. But we do have stone being mined here from Tamerlane, so maybe thinking about a castle. No, he's going to go for even another TC. And light cav still moving around here. But Pikes and Monks are back towards the middle right now for Wallace. Wow, big, big military play here from Wallace. I think this means the third TC actually comes up on the gold in the middle then. Yeah, it would feel very natural. There's so much of it. I don't think the Rhinos are that important anymore. But yeah, we're definitely going to see the TC. And there goes Wallace. Boom. Yep, Wallace is walled in the sides. So the Light Cav shouldn't be able to break through. We'll probably just see more house walls behind. That's not a big deal. Two relics for Tamerlane is huge, though. Tamerlane will probably be able to get these as well. Because the light cab are out there. Losing that siege workshop was... I mean, losing the monastery and the siege workshop sucked. But to have to remake a siege workshop right now feels so uncomfortable. Um, yeah, Jiren, I think your memory is correct. Doubt was William Wallace in Hidden Cup 2. And Dogal was Tamerlane. Yeah, and uh, if I recall, it was Doubt against MBL. And it was Dogao against Leary at a certain point. Uh, I think MBL was Eric the Red. And then Leary's name, I actually forget. From Hidden Cup 2. It's been a very long time. So economy's still pretty close. I think the Aztec economy is underrated. I think people forget how important that carry capacity can be. Also, the production rate of their military could really sneak up on you. To have the res collected be so close when Tamerlane has relics and Tamerlane is Burgundians is pretty crazy to me. Ah, yeah. Leary was King Sancho, and then in Hidden Cup 3 was King Alfonso. And in Hidden Cup 5, we have King Steven. So maybe uh, Leary is, is confirmed to be a king again. Okay. Slyther the Dragon says, T90, worst caster ever. I hate watching every vid you post, tonguey face. Okay, well, goodbye. That made my day, thank you. Siege continues, Pikes Monks advancing forward. This is still a really good area to push. Like, I think if you break through these walls, you could still give your opponent a really tough time. And it's something that I think you need to consider to doing, because otherwise you're just going to have all this, these headaches on the sides here. But nice job from Tamerlane to use the knights on the right side and was able to break through using the monk and the knights there just a moment ago. And it just... I love how Tamerlane is expanding and he's like, fine, take the middle. 
But also, there's so much gold in the middle. Do you really want to leave that there? That's the tricky thing about this map. Based on how the series has gone, though, Tamerlane is going to have a field day if this is open. Like, Tamerlane, it just gives him more reason to make more army and to nerd out and be aggressive there. And life for William Wallace right now is extremely difficult. Now, this is kind of interesting. Tamerlane's also chopping these trees. Now, that is probably just to take wood. It's not something that Tamerlane's thinking about, but eventually that could be opened up. But oh man, a monk just went down to a more light cap. The pikes really need to be over here right now, and here they come. This needs to be walled up before this turns into something more. It already has turned into a bigger headache than William Wallace wanted. And we even see the cavalier upgrade right now from Tamerlane. Light Cav will gladly dive in to kill some monks, which they do. Beautiful play. And this is exactly what the Burgundians would have wanted here. Just Light Cav against monks. William Wallace definitely struggles against the pressure that Tamerlane sends in. Seems to struggle a little bit with the timings too, right? Tamerlane took that good engagement in early castle. Now is taking really good engagements. And when I think back to the Arabia game, it was Mezzo, right? So again, another player who likes Mayans or Aztecs, because William Wallace did Mayans game one, and now we've got Aztecs game four. Mezzo and like walls and defense is kind of what Wallace likes. I'm still leaning towards fire, man. I just can't get... Still leaning towards fire right now for, for William Wallace. Imp could be amazing for either player. Tamerlane's like, just give me more army. He's still making Cavalier. He's still making Light Cav. And he figures, I'll just kill your pikemen. And then I will just continue to kill monks. But at what point is this going to be too many Cav? I, I don't know. I feel like it's paid off. More barracks from William Wallace. Again, I just don't think he ever expected his opponent to continue producing like this. And Tamerlane just took this opportunity and has been flying with it. 60 Cs? Wow, six town centers is ridiculous. And does have three relics. I think at this point, though, now we're starting to see more upgrades. Now there's a lot more pikemen. Maybe at this point, this is when you've gone a little bit too far with the cav. And again, monks are going to be found. Monks are going to be killed. I take it all back. That's still worth it. But still, pikemen number is climbing here. Four barracks. It should be upwards of 20 pikes pretty soon. I don't know if, if... Maybe at that point you need to take your foot off the gas as the cab player. There is the three... Uh, one of the relics is actually right there. And that is being attacked slowly. Mobility of the cab still playing a role. Numbers of the cab still playing a role. Upgrades on the cab have worked out too. But there's just pikes everywhere. Really need to see more upgrades come in from William Wallace. He's just working off of one upgrade. And look, look at how nerdy Tamerlane is. He actually deleted a wall, ran in, killed the siege there. This guy's got full control over the game right now. Crop rotation in Castle Age? And finally, finally, those of you who are stressed out with this, William Wallace is going to get the walls down here. And this will be imp soon for Tamerlane behind this. And he knows this could be a side where he's pressured, so he drops the castle here. Hmm... Okay, population, still reasonable for William Wallace, has all of this gold. But look what Tamerlane did. He actually chopped through here, and then he also chopped through here. So he's going to bring all of his cab towards the middle. I don't think that Wallace was ever expecting that, because Wallace can't see that. Can actually scout it now with the Cavalier. But now the pikemen need to shift towards the middle. So it seems like this is going to be more middle focus now. Now, if you're Tamerlane, you still want to make your opponent work for the side control. So, I think if Tamerlane sees all the pikes here, Tamerlane's going to immediately come back here to pressure this side. I also have a slight suspicion we might see a very rare revolution with all these TCs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven TCs. We see Burgundian vineyards now, so the farmers are going to bring in gold. So many vills in queue right now. If we start to see infantry upgrades, I think that's when there's gonna we know there could be a revolution. But Flemish Revolution, most people think is just too expensive to ever research at a high level now. And they pretty much nerfed it into the ground. It's more of a casual, you know, 
Lowey the Legend type tech now than it is a tech that people see to consider it worth it at the high level. Okay, Wallace has to have the game sense. Like, this is actually a pretty basic thing at this point. You have to have the game sense you're going to be pushed here, and you got to wall this up. This needs to be stonewalled. It's going to be housewalled because it's fire, and fire loves his house walls. I, 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 I'm feeling like it's fire. I'm that certain. <laughs> He's not going to stonewall it. Um, Sorry, maybe I shouldn't get ahead of myself. I'm going to sound like an idiot in two hours when we reveal who this actually was. But okay, Relic was snagged there next to that monastery. That's going to be two Relics for the Aztecs. We have more Monk upgrades coming in. That's a lot of Pikes. And Tamerlane has 160 Vils with 10 more in queue. Is this going to be a revolution? I, I, it's either an unintentional overboom or we are going to see a revolution. I think it's an unintentional overboom though because we're not seeing upgrades. 161 Villagers. Us our upgrade coming in. Chemistry will probably come in. So we could see hand cannons out of these ranges. That's the plan. But Imp was so late. The stables are now being converted, actually, by these monks. So the Hussar upgrade might not happen. This TC is going down. This is the starting gold for Tamerlane. And William Wallace has so much army now. He has walled the sides, and he's just pushed right through the gut. And Hussar upgrade denied. Stable gets converted. We might actually see Zolato warriors from William Wallace. Aztecs can't make stables, but if they convert stables, you can make some Zolata Warriors. Pretty much just an Easter egg thing, but it is something that's nice. And oh, look at this, guys. So Wallace thought that he, well, he's thinking I have the middle right now. And he started to outpost, but look at the area that his opponent has cut through. He just lost some Vils here because the Light Cav are able to run through that way. This push needs to be dealt with. 180 villagers for Tamerlane! Tamerlane, 180. You have to revolution now. You either have to delete 40 of those bills, or you might as well just go for the revolution. I don't think this is intentional. 180 bills with 10 more in queue. I think it's just stress. I think it is just the, you know, the, the stress of the moment. More house walls because this player refuses to freaking stone wall. <clears throat> it's fire. And um, the Pikes and the Monks are there waiting. There's no military to deal with this. And we have the Flemish Revolution! It happened! Every villager for Tamerlane is now a Flemish militia. And they are far from fully upgraded. I don't know if this was the plan from Tamerlane. But we have the first Flemish Revolution in like... And a very long time. And of course, you hear the... Roar! You hear the roar? If you're William Wallace, and you have to run. Because these things are going to swarm from all angles now. Here they come on this side. Here they come here as well. Now, the reason this was nerfed is because people were like, how do you kill 190 instant military? It is very difficult. And the Flemish militia are still quite strong even without the upgrades. They find the right units here. They could find the Trebs. They find the monks. Now, the eventually... There's going to be, like, no eco for Tamerlane. Like, right now, Tamerlane only has uh, eight eco. So there's not a lot of resource income behind this. But there's just so much freaking army everywhere. It's really hard to stop. My mouse just died. My freaking... My mouse just died. Can I... Okay, we're casting like this as I charge my mouse. Um... Okay, Mouse is charging. We have a Flemish revolution happening. This is crazy. I'm going to have to cast like this now. I'm so sorry. The Trebs are going for the TC. William Wallace will lose the majority of his eco here. And uh, he's losing everything here, but there's no Trebs, at least, in this situation to push. Um, I mean, it's the first time in a long time we've seen a revolution, but... It does feel very familiar all of a sudden. It just feels like the revolution is still so strong. To have that much army so quickly is so hard to stop for the opponent. And by the time William Wallace stops this, it feels like his eco is going to be a wreck. And then maybe the Vil counts will be somewhat even? 
I don't know. There's always this period of, of reboom after this. Wallace is migrating. He's running to the middle. He does have Arbalest. He needs a way to keep his castles up. There's only 46 army now for Tamerlane. 34 of that is still Flemish Militia. The Trebs are starting to go down. Uh-oh. There's not a lot to protect the Trebs. And, God, this is so embarrassing. I'm so sorry uh, my mouse died on me. I switched to a wireless mouse, and I'm regretting it. At least we know it'll be charged for, you know, the rest of the game. I, I should just need to charge it for a little bit here. But yeah, that Treb needs to be taken out big time, man. Who wins this game, guys? Tamerlane or William Wallace? I... I want to say that the the revolution was properly nerfed based on what I've seen here. Like, in the past, it was, like, it was so much cheaper. And so it, it was like you could click revolution and be back in 100 vils in no time. Kind of feels like Tamerlane can't do much, and the Trebs are now trapped! The Trebs are now trapped, and William Wallace has held on! Now, what's wild here is... No, don't let the trap... Don't let the trap roll away! Okay, it's dead. Okay, what's wild here, though, is that Tamerlane is so spread around the map. He... And uh, William Wallace can only access him via this chop, this opening. And he doesn't have siege yet, so we'll actually give Tamerlane some time. Okay, hold on. I should be able... How long do you think I have to charge this mouse before I can get another 20 minutes out of it? You think a minute or two is good? It should be fine, right? I... Maybe... You know what? This game has been crazy. Let's just... Let's just... This is fine for now. This is fine for now. Well, this is fine. T90 fine in chat. If you have the emote, it's fine. I apologize. This whole game has been insane, though. And now it's 77 eco for Tamerlane. So he has overtaken his opponent's eco. He doesn't have a lot on gold, I'm noticing, though. And that gold is all towards the middle. And here come the arbs. Here comes the one treb to push this area. But this game has just been bonkers. Meanwhile, towards the south, we'll be there in a second, we've got leftover Flemish militia with skirms and with hand cannons. And that is not something that's going to be easy for William Wallace to fight. William Wallace is trying to push, though. So he has to defend his base while also pushing the middle. Guys, this is the first competitive game that's been publicly covered with this map. And already, what a beauty. What a freaking game here. This has been amazing. Thank you to whoever these players are. We'll find out who they are for this one. It's been so interesting to see all the different things that can happen on this map. Down here, it's just the slaughter. Like, these hand cannons and these skirms. It's the perfect combination against a player who's been going with Pikeman and Arbalest. The Aztecs would really need to mix in their own skirmishers, which they do have you know, enough uh, firepower to deal with this then. But that's obviously going to take time. Still taking time here to push this castle. We've got Tamerlane trying to just hold. And like... So neither player really able to defend their starting eco right now. This is ridiculous. This is wild stuff, right? And... It's, it feels like Tamerlane's economy is less affected by all this at the moment. And these skirms and the militia and the hand cannons are killing a lot of this eco for Wallace. Wallace has 62 vils. It's 106 for Tamerlane. Army count is really high for Wallace, though. So that's the other thing. is Maybe Wallace's army is stronger. And over here, Wallace, at least for now, still continuing a push. But no, he's going to see skirms and he has to back away. And Tamerlane has waited so patiently here... And he runs out with these units to go and snipe that trap. That is beautiful patience from him to repair that castle, to wait for the skirms and kill that. So we we got our flem our competitive Flemish revolution, the button as people call it. And at least before the flem rev was nerfed, what we would see is the players who flem revved would somehow still have the eco lead after they reboomed. But you need to have the ATCs. You need to have so many vills. But I'm liking the eco and the way it looks right now. It's like every time William Wallace tries to find some damage, he's going to get those two arbalests into the back, but he's probably going to run in towards skirms. It's just wild still because Tamerlane doesn't have gold. He doesn't have a lot of gold. He's going to find a little bit down here. Yeah, you can Flemish Revolution a second time. Again, the, now it is 
the price of Flemish Revolution is based on the cost of... Or it's based on how many villagers you have. Which was the change they made where most people felt like it was too expensive. We'll have to ask Tamerlane after if it was something that he had planned. Or if he just re he accidentally overboomed and he felt like he had to. To me, it felt like it wasn't planned because he didn't have the infantry upgrades. There's the lateral upgrade for William Wallace, who's getting out skirmed at the moment. But with the lateral, his skirms would be superior. He's just really struggling for food in Woodico right now. So it was planned, but it was planned without upgrades. I think either way, you could say maybe it wasn't the perfect Flemish Revolution uh, from that perspective, but... Yeah, if you're booming up, I think with the 8 TCs and 180 Vils, I think those two things combined, you've got to lean towards it being planned. Like they, they're normally not going to see that many town centers. The town centers is really the big indicator there. Arbalest and Monks trying to hold with conversions. Daniel... Uh, no, sorry, Tamerlane really needs control of the middle. <laughs> sorry, I don't know who they are. I'm just so certain that Tamerlane is Daniel. <laughs> uh... 120 pop for uh, for William Wallace. More and more upgrades coming in here for Tamerlane. You just need to get to the middle to access that gold. It looks like Tamerlane is starting that here with his trebs, with his skirms, pushing through the middle. He's had great patience. And he has used the outside so wonderfully in this game. and Also has killed quite a few monks. Dives in for a few more monks there. William Wallace, I think if William Wallace would have stonewalled this much earlier instead of using all these buildings. I mean, a lot of the buildings were just damage control at a certain point, but I think the house walls really hurt Wallace's chances here. It became quite easy for Tamerlane to find a way through, and a couple conversions are not going to be enough here for Tamerlane to hold. Uh, excuse me, for, for Wallace to hold. Actually, I take that back. A lot of cannons were converted there, maybe. But it just, it just feels like the eco is still not there for Wallace at the moment. Really struggling. Like, every bad engagement for Wallace hurts so much more because his eco is, is just all out of whack. And oh man, he gets found over here! Tamerlane finds him over here. Great finds. As Wallace tries to expand for maybe some wood control here. I'm still charging my mouse, guys. Like I say, all the time. And like I said to my fiance when I first met her, lower your expectations and it'll be a great time here. What a fun game that was. Now I'm going to try and use my mouse again so I can select the winner. And hopefully it's working. Yeah, there we go. Tamerlane wins the game on the Flem Rev. That was crazy. And is now one win away from winning the show match. Uh, we'll of course have a poll and people can vote on who they think is who. Uh, the conclusion of this here, and we'll reveal that as well. But Tamerlane has played amazing so far. A uh, bit of a weird game. I really do think it just comes back to how Tamerlane was able to utilize the sides. When he break through, broke through with the Light Calf and with the um, with the Knights and the Cavalier and Castle Age, he was just able to have so much map control. And that is what set up that Flemish Revolution. He used all that time to boom up. And the, the economy was just unbelievable throughout this game. To Flemrev and then still have this much this many collected resources tells you how good the position was for Tamerlane. I think William Wallace maybe saw the amount of gold in the middle and thought Aztecs can do wonders here with Siege and Monk. And even the Siege Monk push didn't really start off too well in Castle Age there for Wallace. And here we are, game number five. So they changed their colors. I'm gonna change it back. And we've got game number five here between Tamerlane, who's playing as the Koreans, and then William Wallace, who's gone for the Incas. A hundred percent you're Brazilian. You, William Wallace is from Brazil. It is either Dogal or it is either Fire, okay? We've seen every single Mezzo Civ choice. Incas, Mayans, and Aztecs, and also Islands was the first home map. This is a Brazilian. Not even a doubt in my mind. I'm going with Dogal or I'm going with Fire, and if I get it wrong, I'm going to give 20 subs to the stream. It is definitely one of those two. Anyways, Tamerlane's playing as the Koreans. I've had some guesses with Tamerlane. Tamerlane's a very aggressive player. I still think... I think still feeling Daniel vibes, you know? 
But anyways, the map here is Cup. Let's break down how Cup works. So the Hidden Cup 5 version of Cup, we basically have just balanced out some things. Um, but in general, the way this map works, like a lot of Hidden Cup maps, is it's based on options. So uh, players have the water area to use in the middle. And you can choose to dock between the player town centers. If you do that, that is controlling a more critical area if units were to, to walk, you know, over to your base. But there's not as much fish control there. If you make navy here, you cannot pass over this strip of land over to the other side, where obviously there's a whole lot more fish. But again, if you have control of this area, you then do not control the area next to your base. And in some cases, like if someone has water control here, you can range a lot of this. You could destroy walls. It could be annoying, so... Koreans do not get demos, so I do think in the water war, Koreans could in some ways be awkward. But they also do get turtle ships. They also do get the towers, and I think their late game could be really strong here. Yeah, this map uh, was one of the maps that I had uh, made or worked, or, or sorry, play, played a role in making. Obviously, I was the idea guy. I'm not a map scripter myself. And we wanted the middle to look like a trophy. Um, I don't think any of the players would be very excited to receive a trophy that looked like this. It looks pretty bad if you think it's supposed to look like a trophy, but that was kind of the idea, which is why it's called Cup. Or, uh, you know, Hidden Cup. So, Incas? I mean, very solid civilization. Um, cheaper... Any unit that costs food is cheaper. Strong Eagles, they've got the Slingers against Infantry. I don't think their Navy's necessarily the best, but they're just a very flexible sieve. Especially when playing on land. But I do think the water aspect does make me lean a little bit more towards Koreans in some ways. And this is where scouting becomes very important. Tamerlane's going to dock here. And we actually have a barracks from William. Now, in the past, guys, we would see a lot of players avoid docking here. Because Militia can actually walk on this and kill uh, fishing ships. Quick walls here from Tamerlane. Just to get the dock down. But I'm guessing the Militia from William Wallace will probably come directly here. To disrupt the fishing ships. Maps are fairly open. Uh, this gold is really awkward. Like I said, for whatever reason, they're playing the Hidden Cup 4 version. We are... But we have pushed out some changes to, to try and avoid this type of a situation. In general, you're, it's usually pretty safe map you're working with with Cup because you've got the wood in the back and back resources. Um, but the main golds and stones can sometimes be a little close to the water, so we did try and make some tweaks there. Housed here, Tamerlane. So forgot to make a house, and now Fishing Ship is going to be attacked by Militia. And this type of stuff is annoying, man. This is really annoying. <laughs> Because your fishing ship has to go back to the dock to drop off the food. So, <laughs> you know, I think the the investment here from William Wallace is more than worth it. These fishing ships are not going to be as efficient as Tamerlane was planning on. But, I mean, if you keep them alive, and then if you make a fire galley in the next stage, you clear all this up, and then you have the fishing ship. So you just have to micro your fishing ships more than you normally would. I don't think fishing ships is normally something players micro. They're not used to microing it anyways. This does not mean that William Wallace is not going to go to water, though. William Wallace is going to click up now. Very nice uptime here. And is shifting a lot over to wood and probably gold. So now William could decide to build a dock here. And dude, a juicy demo could happen if Tamerlane's going to be out in the middle like that. But not a bad move there from Tamerlane. Uh, villagers can actually drop off the food at the dock, so it adds nice little element to this and I think hidden cup 3 you couldn't drop off food at a dock from villagers hidden cup 4 you could but it's been a couple years now I forget exactly when that change came in but that was something that came in on one of the DE patches at some point villagers being here actually help because villagers can fight back and fishing ships cannot so nice job there from Tamerlane and Tamerlane also docks this side. Okay, so these docks, if you make navy from them, they cannot connect to each other. And we are seeing a dock here from William Wallace, which makes sense to try and disrupt this area. How random is Hidden Cup? Can Viper and Hera be against each other in the first round? Yes. It is completely random. And I drafted the bracket with the program. I have a video if you'd like to see the bracket draw. 
You could have any matchup in the first round. Any matchup possible from, of course, the 16 players. It can't be like Fat Slop against Viper first round. Oh no, there's Black Forest in the pool. Whatever will Fat Slop do here? Viper, Viper lost to him last time. Will Viper be upset about that? You know. Obviously, it's the 16 players that uh, are in the main event. Someone says, this is Vivi against Ogal. I could see that. I could see why people would say that. I, of course, have my opinions. Everyone will have to vote. Give their input here. Now, Tamerlane, again, cannot make demos. Tamerlane was able to scout that there's a dock here from William Wallace. So William Wallace has the Militia, the Eagle, and then also has the Fire. So really messy stuff. And there's not really going to be that much in the way of fish here long term. The Militia and the Eagle paying off. And William Wallace, really nice strategy so far. And I think it, it is really difficult for the Koreans here because you can't make a demo. <laughs> uh, villagers are standing over this terrain now. It looks pretty funny. William Wallace has even brought a villager forward. The Militia, the Fire, the Eagle, everything working. And down goes the Fire Galley. Tamerlane is, is falling apart. Loses a villager there as well. William Wallace, clean play. And okay, we have a GG call. This is Daniel. This is freaking Daniel, bro. Daniel's like, ah, whatever. It's a show match. Uh, it's fine. I'm already winning more games. I'm getting 100 bucks if I lose. It's fine. Daniel confirmed. This is Daniel. 12-minute GG. The game is not over yet, Daniel. Now, he didn't set up his eco efficiently here, Tamerlane. So maybe he, Tamerlane realized that. I'm going with Daniel confirmed. Danny boy confirmed is my guess. I, who, who knows about William Wallace, though? Uh, scores 3-2. We get more games from it. Not the longest game ever. Really nice game plan there from William Wallace. And good execution. I think it was perfect. Again, like I think fishing here is very risky. From what I remember on older cup games, players would usually fish on the outside because it's harder for the opponent to get there. And a freaking again, guys. They won't stop changing their colors. Whoever these two are, they're changing their colors every single game without fail. I'm going to put the colors back to where we've had them. And here we are for game number six. We've got William Wallace, who many people seem to think could be one of our Brazilian players on our list of options. He's playing as the Vietnamese here. And then we've got Tamerlane in the blue. And Tamerlane playing as the Hindustanis. Now on two of the losses for Tamerlane, Everyone has felt like they were slight early GGs. And slight early GGs, in my experience, happened from an American player who is on the list of potential players named Daniel. Now, the previous one was 14 minutes, so maybe that wasn't slight. But maybe we we're looking at Daniel against Dogao or Fire, or maybe we're just wrong. It could just be wrong. Um, Vietnamese is a really nice civilization for late game. But I feel like they could actually have some problems against the Hindustani Ghulam. Ghulam, of course, you need to create out of a castle, though. So we'll see if it gets to that stage. We'll see if this is a fast castle play. Some players will choose to go for Feudal Age for some scouts here. And I think both civs could easily do that. Find out soon. Um, thank you, Smooksy. Thank you, Wartech, for the primes. Uh, guys, I'm going to share this with you if you didn't already see it. But the... Um, I think a big thing about Hidden Cup is it's a cool concept, but people need to hear about the concept in a way that's digestible. And if they, you know, if I give you a 30 minute video that breaks down Hidden Cup, no one wants to watch that. So uh, I know you, some of you guys are going to laugh and be like, ha, TikTok. But I did post a uh, TikTok and a YouTube short, and I'm going to post on Twitter as well. Basically, it's a minute. And it explains how Hidden Cup works. Uh, maybe people could link that. But a big ask from you guys. Like if you guys are already going to be watching Hidden Cup. Something that could go a long way. Is if you have a buddy you used to game with. Or like a sibling or a friend or whatever. You could just send that to and be like hey. Check it out. If it piques people's interest. You know. Uh, it, it, maybe you'll have some buddies watch it with you. If they have an idea of the concept. Would love for you guys to share that around. That would That would mean a lot. Because I want more people to come into the game, obviously, when, when we have big events like this. And I think Hidden Cup can add some extra fun things for people who, who might not even know the player identities. Like, you could still root for a hero. You could still be all in on Slim the Grim, for example. And figure out, you know, player tendencies as you go. 
Thank you, Ducks. Yeah, so we got the TikTok. We've got the short. I'll post it on Twitter as well. Um, I did post the short on Twitter, and some people said they passed it along. That'd be awesome. Someone got their five colleagues to watch Hidden Cup 4 last time. Sick. Were you guys watching it at work? How did that work? Or was it like... Did you all call in sick for the same week? <laughs> and then your boss got pissed? <laughs> Whoops. Sorry about that. T90, everyone is 40 here. We don't have a TikTok. Oh, Staberson. Oh, Staberson. I, that is not true, my friend. It is not true that everyone's 40. We do have plenty of people that are near 40, around 40. The average is probably around 29, I would say. Because we've got, we've got some early 20ers. We've got some mid-30s. We've got some mid-40s. Based on what I'm seeing people type right now, I actually think maybe average is early 30s. I guess I'm thinking of what the average was a couple years ago, and all those people got a couple years older, and so did I. Ooh. Hey, uh, guys, type your IQ. Hmm. Really? Okay, well, explains why you're watching me then. I'm probably the one who's lowered your IQ over all these years. All right, so walls coming up here from William Wallace. Big, big, big expansive walls. This will definitely be Fast Castle. Walls coming up here from Tamerlane. Definitely going to be Fast Castle. Thank you, Sharp, for the Prime. Thank you, Adesign, for the Prime. Thank you, Spoo Spoodily Rudily, for the Prime. That was fun to say. Also, Sunny Pee Pee. Weird name to say. Says, he he, was wondering why I was seeing ads. Then I noticed I had to resub. Thank you for the 33 months. Yeah, ads will still occasionally run. Subbing does avoid them. But I have the ads on like the lowest possible tier. So this shouldn't be too big of an issue. I also miss Fly Guy gifted subs and Batosia gifted subs because I suck. I'm sorry, guys. Cloak, thanks for the resub too. B Water, thank you very much. Retap. Sorry, it's Gold Rush. It's a show match. It's a Saturday. We're chilling. So felt like it was a good time to say thank you to some people. T90, has Twitch got in contact with you? No. Um, yeah, Twitch is obviously a huge platform. Uh, they are kind of very well known for not being too connected to the creators. And as far as I know, they recently, like a lot of companies, laid a ton of people off too. So I don't think I'll have a contact at Twitch. I don't think any front page or any type of promotion from Twitch will happen for Hidden Cup 5. Which is a bummer. But also, the records we did for Hidden Cup 4, for example, was during a period where I didn't have front page. Like, I think I had front page, like, two hours on, like, an earlier day, so. But yeah, we'll see. Maybe that'll change. Maybe Twitch will suddenly respond to all my inquiries, but I, I don't really expect it. You guys got my back. It's all good. Man, I would be really tempted to go for Ghoulums here if, against the Vietnamese. But I think if you do that this early, it probably does work against your eco a bit more than you would like. There's a barracks from Tamerlane, so this will probably just be the scout approach here. T90, what's your therapist saying about the way you talk about yourself? Um, I don't talk to my therapist about the way that I talk about myself in front of people with a microphone. I talk about mm, more of the internal things. <laughs> But if my therapist heard the way I talked about my gameplay, maybe they'd be like, you need to believe in yourself. <laughs> Sloppy sent carrier pigeons to Twitch. Okay, nice. Well, that's probably a better chance of me, of me getting a response by, via carrier pigeon than email or any other method at this point. So, hmm. Is Dave your therapist? Uh, No comment. No comment on that. T90, will you be casting the next Red Bull? Who said there's a next Red Bull? Last I heard, Red Bull had left the Age of Empires 2 community. Red Bull's, Red Bull's coming back? Well, I will say, if it was an indicator that Red Bull might come back to Age of Empires 2, if there's any indicator, maybe they would uh, possibly consider sponsoring an event that's happening. I don't know, like maybe February 25th through March 3rd? Just some random dates. I feel like maybe if Red Bull would have interest in, you know, 
chipping in and sponsoring an event happening February 25th through March 3rd. <clears throat> Maybe if they did that, that could be a sign that they're coming back to the game. I don't know. Guess you'll have to show up to find out. Scouts are going to be in the way from Tamerlane. Tamerlane's winning 3-2. Guys, I'd love to add suspense to this, but this player is 100% Daniel. This is the most Daniel play I've ever seen in my freaking life. Super nerd play with scouts, very aggressive. When things get rough, when, when the situation is bad, resign right away. Kind of feels like Daniel to me. Now, William Wallace, a little bit more mystery, maybe. I could see some Vivi guesses. I've seen some fire guesses. I saw Valis guesses. I think Valis may be like freaking Andy. Actually, the more you think about it, the more you start to think maybe it could be them. Hmm. Interesting stuff. But obviously a very boomy game here. And this is going to be scouts for control here from Tamerlane. And it's just going to be a straight boom, actually, from William Wallace. William Wallace has not added a barracks or a range or anything. Remember, T90 promised 20 subs if it's not a Brazilian player. True, but that's William Wallace. I will also... Ooh, do I want to... Why do I... Why do I feel so compelled to make more bets that I'm going to lose? Why did I... I'm tempted to also make bets with Tamerlane here. Hmm. Okay, second TC, third TC. And Tamerlane will realize there's no production buildings from the opponent. So this is going to be full map control in the middle for Tamerlane. Tamerlane will also opt for a TC and this will go late. I feel like Vietnamese are normally building up again, uh, building up towards archers. So the Ghulam could be a really strong unit here for the Hindustani player. Game in Portuguese for Tamerlane. Is there indicators the game is in Portuguese? Ah, oh, what is this? What is this crap? Wait a second, Robo. What? Bro. Well, for Hidden Cup main event, we're going to make sure it's all in English. But, okay, one of the wrecks gave us that. So, okay. God. Come on, man. What are we doing, guys? What are we doing? Better now than main event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we'll make sure everything's good. That's something, obviously, for a show match, it's been a little less structured. I, I was maybe my mistake for reading the message from chat there. <laughs> but we don't know. So this just means that one of the players, like whoever the wreck came from, has this. This does not mean that it's attached to one player in particular. That could... What if... Wait... Does anyone remember that happening in the previous games? What if every game has been like that? Hmm. Well, anyways, big old boom. Three TCs over here from Tamerlane. What if Robo told the players to switch their game to Portuguese to mind game all of us? Oh, big brain admin. Big brain admin. It'd be sick. Three TCs into what here? So, my thinking is Ghulams take time to mass. Um, you need the castle for them, right? So if you build a defensive castle, that's not ideal. Ideally, you want the castle here. So I'd like to see maybe Wallace go for, and Wallace is going to do it. Maybe start to add some army now. Maybe get some army onto the field to at least make it so that castle has to be more defensive. Monastery has just now come up, and the starting scout for Wallace has still been running around. Looking for monks. This scout could actually be saved. Again, my indicator... My thinking for Wallace being a Brazilian player... Was the infatuation with Mayans, Aztecs, and Incas. And also the Islands home map pick, game number two. The scout finally goes down there. Th those are big indicators for me. That this would be a player from Brazil. Like, also, some of the house walling at various points definitely felt like fire for me. So, so funny story, guys. So, um, again, the Brazilian pros have the, the islands and the house walling are two big things with them. So, it was actually Hidden Cup 1. Now, most of you guys weren't around then. It was a test format. It was a three-day event. And I saw house walling. 
And of course, like, the community was smaller. Um, it was different time, right? I think less was known about certain players that weren't, like, Viper or someone. And so, anyways, I saw house walling, and I was like, oh, that is 100% fire because of the house walling from the Brazilians, this and that. And it was Miguel. <laughs> it was another Brazilian pro. And after Hidden Cup, Fire messaged me, and he was like, great call, dude. The problem was there was three Brazilians in the event, because there was also Riot as well. It was Riot, Fire, and then also Miguel. And Fire was just telling me that he thought it was so funny. And it's now been six years, guys. Six years since that first Hidden Cup. And I'm still saying the same crap. It's so cool. Okay, Spearman added here and double stable here from Wallace. And also Light Cab. This is smart. This is really smart thinking. So much better than just trying to go imp without any map control. And I think soon Tamerlane may want to consider a TC out here. And that will now be something that you have to think a little bit more about. Camels are going to be added, though, from Tamerlane, which would be great against the light cap. Smart thinking. Tamerlane also working out here to get to the second relic. And adding more stables now to add more army against this, which is smart. Yep, and maybe we need to see Pikeman here from William Wallace if there's going to be Hindustani camels out there. This is great, though. And this this army has allowed him to come out here to take this gold, which is really smart. Also building up stone to be able to drop a castle here. Yeah, there's not a single Brazilian in the main event now. So the whole house walling thing is actually something that's lost, which is a little disappointing, actually. Like, the, the things that we're talking about here with this potentially being a Brazilian player will not be something we discuss this Hidden Cup because... I don't think any of the other players have the same tendencies. I don't think that there's many players who like really like islands, for example. Viper used to. That would be a big thing, maybe. Viper in the past used to go for islands a lot. And the house wall thing, eh, not, not as much of a thing with any of the main event players. But we'll see. We'll find out who these players are. Big moment in this game. William Wallace went to drop this castle. That would be an amazing castle, but it could be denied. There's a lot of army around. But Pike upgrade is in. Castle's on the way, and I think Tamerlane realizes too little too late here with this army. It's really close. Like, I think if this army was in position, I actually could de deny this castle, but the timing just perfect from William Wallace. So Gao and Tato used to pick islands. Oh, that's true. Tat Tato uh, would, would do islands a great deal. Like, everybody house walls, but it's the way the Brazilians house wall that's different. Most players are going palisade wall first, and then they will go for house walls. Whereas a lot of the Brazilian guys, they will go for the house walls before palisade walls. This game isn't the best example of the house wall thing. This, obviously, every player is going to do this. This makes a lot of sense. Nice play there from William Wallace. Tamerlane as, is building a castle. And Tamerlane is on the way to imp. Now, both players are going to have very similar imp times. Res collected is quite close, but Tamerlane is ahead. Also has three relics. Also even going to find that extra stone out there. I think Ghulam is just so insane here. Like I think that this unit... It can't be stopped by anything that William Wallace is making right now, that's for sure. Like, maybe some elephants will actually need to be made? Is that worth it? Feels a bit weird when there's monks out there. Redemption's an interesting one from Tamerlane. Redemption can be helpful to convert Bombard Cannons, and Bombard Cannons are normally out in Treb Wars. So that, that makes a lot of sense to me, especially if you have the gold floating. If you don't have the gold floating, it's a different situation. Wolves are attacking Tamerlane here. Tamerlane also attacking the wolves. And this will be castle number two for Tamerlane. Now, it's not next to this castle, which is really nice because it makes it more difficult for the Treb player to be able to, to snowball the Treb war now. Woo, woo, woo. Castle will be up. You need elite Ghulam, and then these things are nuts. You do not get the final armor upgrade with the Hindustanis, but getting elite Ghulam... Kind of does the rest. It takes them to 8 Pierce Armor, I believe. Crossbow upgrade. Does William Wallace just not expect this? Does he not expect Ghulams? This is not it. 
this is not the choice. Like, I would be okay with Cav Archers because they're more mobile and they do more damage overall. Clearly, I think William Wallace is expecting to lose the middle hill here. Maybe, yeah, maybe expecting hand cannons. Yeah, uh, expecting hand cannons from Hindustanis could be smart as well. Can't really see. Is, is looking now to see the stables. And now ranged upgrades are coming in. And another castle here from Tamerlane. So both players are going to make traps. Vietnamese do have champion, but going for champion at this stage is a little bit awkward. And if you go for champions against the gunpowder, you feel like you're screwed. And you Stani's just have great options, man. Ooh, I like this. Well, no, I don't actually. It's just a pikeman raid. But, you know, it's some something to make Tamerlane work. Tamerlane can click these castles now and see the range and realize his opponent's going range. And there's Elite Ghulam now on the way. Let's see how these range units do. Castle Fire should still be helpful. Light Calf can still be helpful. Elite Ghulam upgrade is in now. So there we go. Feels kind of reminiscent of game number one where upgrades are late for the crossbow here. I'm sure that William Wallace wants to use the castles for Trebs, and that's why we're not seeing Rattans. Arbalest upgrade would need to be in for me to feel somewhat okay with the situation. I I, I just... Elite Ghulam should be amazing here. The, our Pierce Armor's insane. They're taking one damage a hit. They're going to run in, and they're going to feast on these trebuchets. And that's exactly what they do. Tamerlane up 3-2 here, takes every single Treb, and the castle is going to fall. And I just think William Wallace was completely unprepared for this. I don't think he was expecting Ghulam here. I do think it's something that you should expect in many ways. And just completely misread the situation. Maybe thought it was going to be hand cannons. And well, these Ghulams are just destroying. But again, it might be a matchup thing. Like, now we see Cavalier clicked. But again, you go Cavalier here. With your Vietnamese, it doesn't feel all that normal. And then the opponent can just go right back into Camels. So, show match obviously just, just for fun. Just to give us the feel of Hidden Cup. There's no practice and preparation. I mean, the guys played in the qualifiers. But at this point, they're already out of the main event. And I think Tamerlane's Civ choice here and how he's played it has just been perfect in this series. Is likely going to come to a close. The Ghulam's just wrecking every ranged unit. The Bombard Cannons have all been sniped. And Daniel, I mean, <clears throat> Tamerlane has taken the hill. He's brought his Trebs forward. And he'll take down this castle as well. And that will mean there's no castles for William Wallace. And the Cavalier that are on the way, they are not going to be enough. The GG is called. And Tamerlane, in our Hidden Cup 5 show match, wins 4-2. to two. Okay. Um, so question for you guys, what do we do here? So the players, after they completed their series, were asked to guess who they played against. Do we do the poll first and the reveal and then find out who they thought? Or do we do who they thought first? Chat vote before player guess. Poll first makes more. Yeah. Okay. So let's do. Okay. There we go. So, obviously, Veleza got a few votes in there. Who do you think Tamerlane, our winner, was? Vote away. A lot of people are typing three right now. A lot of people seem to think it's Daniel. We had the early GGs. We had the really nerdy, aggressive play. To me, if I had to say a top three, I would say Daniel, number one. I would say... Daniel number two and Daniel number three. There's literally no other option. <laughs> there's no, there's no other option. <laughs> I can't even justify a second or third guess. This has to be Danny boy, dude. <laughs> but okay, if I had to, I would say Andy two and then like, Vivi 3. No, but he said, by the way, he said BTW. I don't think Vivi would say BTW. Maybe Margugu? I think everyone's sleeping on Margugu, actually. Ooh, Margu. 
Ooh, I could see it being Margugu actually. Ooh. Oh, okay. All right. So, so what do the people think? Forty-seven percent of people thought it was Daniel. Uh, fourteen percent thought it was Andy, and then eight percent typed eleven to laugh and didn't actually think it was Valeza. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Um, let's do a vote then on the next player before we do the reveal on this. No, stop, guys! Stop typing numbers. Stop it. God, this is the worst. Okay, vote on who you think William Wallace was. I am going heavy, heavy on the Brazilians here. And I'm going fire over Dogal. Um, but I also could see Vallis. I could see fire. I could see Vallis. I could see maybe like Kapoch. But I think we had some other, like the chat from the game maybe gave us some intel. Because the, the age up was in Portuguese. And that would mean maybe Fire or Dogal then. Whoops on that. Let's see the percentages here. Everyone get your vote in. It looks like every option has received at least one vote. I don't believe there's any color on it if there haven't been any votes. Maybe I'm wrong, actually. Also seems like the system's working today, which is pretty epic because this is a bit of a test for the main event. Someone says this player is not Brazilian. Ooh, okay. All right, good stuff. Thank you for your votes. Thank you for your guesses. And uh, let's think on it a little bit. Uh, Robo, can you please tell me who the players thought they played here? Send that over a while. Oh my freaking God. You guys are not going to believe what Robo just told me. Okay, so William Wallace. Uh, 44% people think it's fire. 23% think it's Dogout. 10% think it's Beleza. Now, both players had to guess who they thought they played. You ready for this? <laughs> both players guessed that they played against the same player. And both players guessed that they played against Daniel. <laughs> which means... <laughs> which means... Uh, we might be wrong here. <laughs> um, both players think they played against Daniel, guys. So, I don't know what that tells us. But that tells us we might have miscalculated. So, um... Ro I mean, we don't have graphics for this. Robo just has to tell me. Robo, please tell me who William Wallace was. Okay. William Wallace was Margugu. And it says in parentheses, he changed his language to Portuguese for the final game and asked me to use this rec deliberately. Freaking Margugu changed his name, uh, changed his game to Portuguese and asked Robo if he could do that. Margugu debated us all. Oh, man. It was Margugu. Dang, that was crazy. I mean, Ducks called it. I think Ducks said Margugu. Dang. And Tamerlane was Daniel. But both players guessed their opponent was Daniel. What? Daniel thought he was playing against himself? Was he? I guess he was trolling too? I don't know. But both players changed their colors all the time. Both players really tried to keep us guessing here. And um, Robo said that after Daniel said that, he then said Margugu. Okay, so Daniel actually... Daniel knew it was Margugu, and Margugu knew it was Daniel. So the players actually got it based on those games. Wow. Well, um, I owe you guys subs because I was so sure it was a Brazilian. Margugu, what are you doing, bro? I was certain it was a Brazilian, and I was also annoyed. I thought that they, that we screwed up with the language, but we just got baited. That is amazing. All right, so 20 gifted subs coming to the stream here on Twitch. This is random, all right? So don't get, you know, all upset if you don't get the subs. I'm trying my best to spread the love where I can. 
Wow, that was a great show match, man. Well, congratulations, Daniel. And well played to Margugu for completely baiting all of us. That was ridiculous. All right, uh, people are spamming dodged. Uh, I got to gift these subs. And um, all right, here we go. 20 gifted subs. There you go, guys. Enjoy. Enjoy everyone who received the emotes. You now can use the dodged emote and the salute and all that good stuff. Poof. Well, guys. Did you enjoy the show match today? <laughs> did you enjoy that? That was... Dude, that was... I thought we had him pegged. I thought it was fire. I thought for sure it was fire. Fire against uh, Daniel there. Margugu. I can't believe he changed his name like that. It's unbelievable. Margugu will be joining me to cast the main event of Hidden Cup. Margugu told me... So when he lost in the qualifier, he was really upset. And he said... Losing in a qualifier is one thing, but losing in a Hidden Cup qualifier is another because it's one of his dreams to make it into Hidden Cup. And uh, I'm excited that Margugu will be involved in Hidden Cup 5. He's a troll. He's a great player, and he's got good energy for casting, so it should be fun. All right. Um, yeah, so that was all I had planned for the day. I have nothing more for you. Um, the main event is going to be in eight days. The main event is going to feature these players, okay? These are the main event players, and if that... I mean, that was super trolly, but, like, players are constantly trying... are going to find ways to try and hide their identities. You better believe it. And we're going to have the best of the very best with lots of money on the line and a whole knockout bracket, which is going to be ridiculous. But there's the qualified players, and then here are the heroes. And this experience that you had today will be amplified because it will be main event and things should be insane. So, um, I don't know which hero you have as your favorite there. I'm all in on Salim. But I've seen a lot of uh, Yadwiga fans out there. Otto the Great fans out there. Vasco da Gama fans. Alfred the Alpaca fans. So, something else, which is exciting. Now, we might just freaking crash the site, but... Something that you can think on this week and something you can do before the main event starts... So here's hiddencup.com, okay? You're probably going to crash it now, aren't you? So here's hiddencup.com. There's info on here. We're adding more. But on hiddencup.com, we have predictions now. And you can predict the bracket. So basically, we don't know who the players are, but we're doing a bracket contest anyways. And there is, uh, as of now, no reward except for your own pride. So if you would like to predict this bracket... Uh, how's this work? Yeah, like this. Uh, feel free to do so. And at the conclusion, we could maybe give a shout out to those that predicted properly. Um, I'm just going to go, okay, Salim just wins that. Salim just wins it all. Salim just champion. Boom, done. My bracket's done because the rest of it doesn't matter. Salim's going to win. But if you guys would like to join uh, and do that, you can do that there. Now, also, uh, we have maybe uh, a week left on tickets for the USA meetup. More people are buying tickets, but I need to remind you, if you're in the U.S., coming to the U.S. meetup in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, if you want to, uh, please join the Discord on that, and please buy tickets while you can. Um, right now, we have like 225, 230 people, numbers climbing, but the tickets are going to be cut in a week. So we have one more week for you guys to buy your tickets. If you have questions on that, if you want to know who else is going to be there, you know, join the Discord, and then you can just chat in there about things and see how things go. Uh, another thing I want to mention, shoot, lots of announcements here. Um, I still have more to say. So I have talked about this already, but we finally have things prepped to start signups for the Community Hidden Cup, um, which you wouldn't actually be hidden, but if you'd like to play in the T90 Community Tourney Hidden Cup Edition, doesn't matter what your skill level is, you can be the biggest noob or pretty solid. I guess at a certain point we cut you off, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically open this week and it, the signups will be open up until the, the week after Hidden Cup. So we've got a couple weeks yet left of signups, but if you have questions, if you want to look into it, uh, how to join the entry is, uh, you have to be at least like a $1 Patreon. That way, you know, we have like a level of entry and, uh, we got more info coming on map pool and whatnot as well, but that's going to be posted on my discord. Um, which I'll do right at the conclusion of the stream. Okay.